Olympics lost to Brisbane. Let's join our commentary team in place at Metricon, the great Dermot Brereton and Alistair Lynch, and calling on the action is Dwayne Russell. Welcome, boys. Thanks, Sandy. Got two of the greatest of all time next to me this afternoon and probably one of the greatest days of all time here on the Gold Coast. Welcome, boys. How good is this? It is beautiful. Forecast for 27 today, as we've experienced already. It's just cooled down in the last few minutes, but it is perfect for overhead marking, Lynch, as we look at the ladder come up. Yeah, looking forward to this clash. North Melbourne sitting in second position. If the Gold Coast win today, they'll join North Melbourne on 16 points. Obviously, if North win, they go clear on 20 points. So I'm looking forward to this one. Yeah. Two very, very impressive offensive teams. The big question mark for me, can the defence of the Gold Coast Suns stand up to the uh, big power forwards of North Melbourne? And two of the big key forwards, as you mentioned, two of the greatest small men ever to have played the game are going to go head to head today. Gary Ablin and Brent Boomer. Harvey looking forward to that battle as well. Nine premierships between our three experts here on the Gold Coast this afternoon. Joining us downstairs, welcome to you, Barry Hall. Yeah, thanks, Dwayne. Well, what a perfect afternoon for football it is and how perfect it is for key forwards today. The bounce not far away. Going to quickly go through two of the best key forwards in the first four rounds of football. Tommy Lynch and Jared Wade have the numbers really stuck up against anyone. They get a lot of the footy this mob. But uh, the contested marks there, three and a half a game for Tommy Lynch. He loves clunking the ball. They bring players into the game, four and four and a half goals each. But look at the pressure from... Uh, Look at the pressure from Jared White. He just puts on enormous pressure in the first four rounds of football. Look, these, these boys are going to get a lot of opportunity to kick goals. They can win games off their own boot. They're going to get the opportunity today. I'm really looking forward to see who can have the most opportunity and who can capitalise on it. Thank you, Barry. Really interesting. There. Both big men, Tom Lynch marks the ball incredibly high off the yeah. ground, Lynch. He's got a real good stretch on him. He's six foot five in the old, 198 in the new, and he can he can seriously jump, and he's got real good endurance. That's right. He's the number one marking forward in the game in the forward 50 at the moment, and uh, Jared White. He's probably the number one player in the game at the moment. He's uh, the veteran, formerly of Carlton, in, is in career best form. This should be a great match up there. Scotty Thompson up against Tom Lynch and Ben Jacobs. Just saw him walk away from Gary Ablett. I'm sure he'll be back there in any second. The Ablett or Hall he'll go to. And Daniel Curry gets his first game for the Gold Coast Suns this afternoon, playing against one of his old teams, North Melbourne, and he's straight into the ruck. And he blocked Goldstein. Bad move early. Goldstein free out of the middle. And Jacobs has gone with Ablett. That's 50 and metre 50, that is a disastrous start for the Gold Coast Suns. This is a shot at goal. Well, that's Gary Ablett's first missed handball in his career, I would have thought. He's missed the target by five oh, metres. Yeah. Not the way you want to start. When you're under the pump, you're you're undersized. There's some personnel out, key personnel in May and Thompson down back, and you make a mistake like that to one of the best ruckmen in the game. Jacob Mollison is the umpire there. He stepped up. I just thought that was good ruck work then. You put a hand out to kind of block him. We might have another look. Top Goldstein, by the way, from 45 out. Slight anti-climax for the fans here, but not for North Melbourne fans. They've got their first. Oh, and there's a little bit happening off the ball. I think uh, Boomer Harvey might have caught one high. Gaz is involved as well, so plenty of passion out there. A very early goal. Here's the free kick. Curry goes across the line, which you're not allowed to do the block, but he comes back. I think realistically that is a free kick. He did cross the line to block, but the ball didn't go straight up, I suppose. Here's the errant handball from Gary Abbott. Never seen this before in my life. There you go. <laughs> Can't imagine Toddy that. Toddy didn't really bother to lean forward. No, he wasn't going to do a hamstring <laughs> trying to get it. Long way down there trying to pick that up. Okay, let's start it all over again. Carry in the middle. Carry against Goldstein. Will he do the same thing this time? You doubt it. He flies. Both got a piece of it. Knocked down towards Hall, who's been in sensational form. Good dumping tackle. Ball stays in the square. North Melbourne to the left-hand side of screen. We're just out of shot. They've already orchestrated an extra man in defence. The Suns have got an extra at the ball. They're not putting one extra in their back line, even though North have the key forwards. They're running with an extra, a seventh midfielder. So Curry called for the block again. Not the start he's after. Well, he would have rapped against yeah, Goldstein absolutely. so many times at training. He's obviously thinking, well, this has worked in match practice at training, all those. There wasn't an umpire there, though. <laughs> no, except for the coach, who probably let it run. Gibson back wide. 
Dal Santa took a while. Did well, took on Miller. In fact, Miller did brilliantly in the end. Pressured the kick, got it out wide. They need a fire starter here somewhere the Gold Coast. Somebody needs to do something quick. Miller, caught. After getting it from Rosa. Zeba. Stolen back again. This looks better. Hall with the shimmy. Grant playing his first game for the Gold Coast Suns as well. Now Chesky, middle of the ground. Petrie takes him down. Oh, Play on. Day, but North Melbourne with the numbers back. And Thompson. Oh, and had Sexton easily, easily loose. Just a really panic kick by Day there. Scotty Thompson, to be fair, though. That might have been a little late, but he's put plenty on that one. You watch this here. Tom Lynch is in late. And then... He's thrown himself over. He's actually done a triple Lindy. Yeah. That's a... That's a and that's now a, go again. That's a yellow card. <laughs> Your terrible kick, though. Sexton was by himself and not seen by Day. It's almost yellow card territory as Brown takes the pluck. And this is going to be the massive issue. Undersized, undermanned defence. Sits it up to the square. Lindsay Thomas thinks about flying. Off hands. Scramble away. He's OK from Malcheski. It won't be deliberate. So with May and Thompson being out of the lineup, we see Clay Cameron, who played a bit as third tall last year, has gone 191 back. 191 centimetres. So he's Cameron. gone back. Sam Day's gone back there as well. And Trent McKenzie is back in the key post. So Wake takes McKenzie straight to the goal square. Goldstein. Thomas went low. Stolen by Curry. Gets a touch. Harbrow. Riscatelli. Sexton kept it in front. Pretty well should get it back again from Martin. Good tackle laid that time by Higgins. Dal Santa, arms free. Zeebel, Thomas. It opens up for McDonald. So a couple of pass targets inside 50. Goes for weight. And why wouldn't you? I'm not so sure Trent McKenzie's going to be all that good at trailing out behind Jared Waite. Gets a big jump. In the air and marks the ball. Well, the ball that comes in at eye level, he jumps and takes it around belly button level. Yeah. So he, he'll be giving McKenzie a look at his rump. He just can't reach around there. No. Four goals last week against Fremantle, Jared Waite. He's kicked 16 goals, three for the year so far. So he's been very accurate until now. And we'll get a scrap it in for a behind. Very early in the day, Dwayne. Nice, but that is going to be a critical matchup. So essentially, Trent McKenzie is going to play full back, and that's yeah. a, a spot that he hasn't played very much football, if any, at AFL level. And oh, no ball. Did he run out of the square? He, he might have touched the line. He might have to break yeah. up the line. Can't go over it. That's what he's called him for. Early indiscretions here from the Gold Coast. Well, they're a bit uh, we dishevelled at the moment after a really disappointing game last week. Thomas lurking, Jacobs lurking, Malczewski, Hamlet, okay. at least clears the area. Sexton trying to keep it running, did well to Lynch. Open forward line, but there's no one there to go for. Back into the middle, Peter Wright, long way down there to reach and pick it up. He's into the team this week, and Zeebel holds it up on the wing. Goldstein's taking Curry to full forward now. So again, they're just trying to manipulate the defence of the Suns. Curry wouldn't have played a lot at fullback either. Atley. A good float in and Mark Cole Jasny. Play on the call. Did you chase him, Jared? Yeah. He waited, didn't he? Yeah. Might work. Go Got knocked down it. by Wright. Grant. Swallow had a piece of it. Wright. Gets it off to Wells. Higgins. That was turned it over. Wells. He held on to the tackle and thrust yeah, himself yeah. forward. Peter Wright heads out by Thompson and he gets the free. Yeah. That's the height in the opposite direction. We talked about the North Melbourne aspect of uh, stretching the defenders, didn't you? But yeah. that is the height of the Gold Coast Suns. You know Lynch is there. Two metre Peter is exactly as I've just described him. One big unit. Ablett getting some treatment at the moment on his ankle. Only had 24 possessions last week. Was a little down on his normal brilliance. But this is huge. Back into the lineup. Gee, distance wasn't a problem. Kicked the cover off. That it. is bizarre. He's kicked that 70 and straight. It's gone six rows back. 
And I think we're a bit surprised after his reasonably impressive form through the NAB Challenge. He didn't get a start first up. Got left, they left went with out, Sam yeah. Day instead. But with yeah. Day having to go back, Wright gets his opportunity. That's probably the major story, though. Gary Abbott looked like he'd been carrying that uh, shoulder, but he's definitely carrying that right ankle at the moment. So not good news for the Gold Coast Suns. Heavily strapped right calf there as well. Gary Ablett there, getting some attention on the bench. He's got a little bit of a niggle on the right quad, the right calf, and right apparently, <laughs> apparently the ankle as well, but just prowling the boundary line at the moment. Swallow tries to scramble it away. Good pick up by Turner, McMillan, just over the head of Petrie, and now they'll fe fan on the rebound. Riscatelli wide, Grant. Got some momentum back at least the Gold Coast. To Martin, a little nudge by Attlee. Cunnington feeds it wide. Riscatelli was coming off. He decided to come back on and get a possession. Did brilliantly there. Sexton, Martin, call it Jasney. Needs to open it up. Got a little oh, nudge. Oh, great Boomer. pressure. Little push by Boomer. Weight over the top. Brown can stroll in. Has a bounce and drills it. All right, if somebody with leadership has to get to Colin Jasley now, the young fella, and go to him and say, we know what you were trying to do, keep your chin up, we still need you to take risks by foot, we still need you to bite off some of those good disposals there. He's played 40-odd games, Colin Jasney. You need somebody to come along and say, buck up, youngster. <laughs> and don't be too uh, down the dumps. The little fella that uh, did that to you, he's done it for many years. He knows what's going on. So great pressure from uh, Brent Harvey. Here's uh, Ablett. Let's just see whether he gets a bit of a, a whack there. There's a kick on the right calf. So uh, he's a bit sore. Keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on North Melbourne. They're on a roll. The top of the AFL ladder undefeated as it stands right now. Zeebel pumps it to half forward. Brown with the big jump. Cunnington turns it over though. Still a chance though. Turner, late inclusion. Wood was a late out for North Melbourne. If you just oh. joined us in a big strip tackle by Brown. Great tackle. And that's what you need from your, your big forwards. If you're not marking the ball in the air, if you can help out at ground level, which certainly Wade has been doing throughout the season, but Brown, very good. Spears to Petrie. Lace out. Yeah, there was a day trail Andrew. Petrie, and as Andrew. you said earlier, oh, with, Durham, with Wade and McKenzie, you're just not going to be able to get your arm around those big bodies if they jump into the mark to take the ball in the chest. Well, that's in that's, that's with any size defender. Forget yeah. that they're a little bit undermanned. That's got to be cut off at the pass yeah. by the midfield. They have to put pressure on and, and make sure it can't come in that nicely. Well, he hurt his right knee at training during the week, hobbled around for a little while, didn't complete the session at 100%. But he's been able to play this afternoon, at least Drew Petrie, and he sprays that. Most possessions on the ground or equal most. Jack Zebel again. He's up to four already in short time. He's been a real barometer for the Kangaroos in these opening four matches. Now the fifth. And that is he gets most of his possessions in the first half. And most of those first half possessions in the first quarter. He really is getting off to a good start. Lovely grab. And the Shepherd's been paid against McMillan. So Peter Wright to get the free. Drew Petrie just asking the umpire which person's got it again. If you can explain it to me. Yeah, it's just that one there standing by himself 40 metres yep. with his hands in the air. Yeah. So long to Lynch. Ferrito, third man up. Goes the knuckle instead. Could have marked it. Ball in. Let's have a look at the Ablett situation again. Watch for the right leg. Yeah, Lindsay Thomas's left leg strikes him on the inside of the calf. So that'll be a, a bruising style injury, not a roll or a joint injury. That's going to go close. Absolutely. That is post only. Lonigan got the shot away. Just an improver, isn't he, Lonigan? Yeah, had a few problems with the hamstrings in his first couple of years out of the under-18s. Uh, but uh, just really cementing himself in the midfield now. A long way to go. Still only 21 years of age, Lonigan. Turner making the most of his chance back in the lineup with Mason Wood out. And he gives it to Atley who puts the Jets on. Gibson, he can get and go if he wants to. They are screaming for it. Boomer Harvey in the pocket. Boomer sniffed that one out. 
That was great play, and it started as you called with Dwayne uh, Turner. Very nice use of the body, didn't get the hands involved in the marking contest, just edged the Suns player under the ball, and away they, away they went. So Boomer Harvey edging closer to the game's record, of course, of Michael Tuck, 426. This is game 414, opens it up and hits the post. Edging closer to 500 goals as well. Burma, 494 for his career now, putting up some amazing numbers. Yeah, they're not dropping away either, no. the numbers. I mean, he's such an extraordinary player. Paul. Open side. Lemons gets it from Cameron. It's wide. This is what we've seen. The Gold Coast at their best, they fly quickly out of their defensive 50 and go wide out to the wings and bring it back through the midfield. Big leap from Lynch, Swallow, ripped it away. Had to keep it in close there. Now Chesky sends it to, just inside 50, Martin can have the shot, and he has been ultra accurate this year as well. He's kicked 10 goals. Jack Martin. He's a, he's a light frame, and uh, he's tough as teak over the ball, but actually leads extremely well. He's a very effective Leading forward, marks well above his head. We saw in the win against Frio at the main stadium a few weeks back, he was very impressive. 10 1 for the season, 8 1 from set shots. Got under that a little, and yeah. he's hit the post. Yeah, fell back on that one. Just need to convert these up opportunities. That's three scores, one goal, two from their four entries. Conversely, North have gone in seven times for their two goals three. Good mark, McKenzie. Oh, it's been paid for the push. You see the nose that was broken last week, still strapped up. Face of Trent McKenzie. Kick backwards from weight. Tarrant. McMillan. Hold it. Play on. It's a beautiful. Gibson. He had very few options and yeah. pulled the trigger on that one. Uses the width, goes wide to Turner. Good rake in that. Put the palm out. He's taking two good marks now, Turner. He's got Zebel in the pocket. He ignores that. Goes to the big guy and dropping in front, Curry. That'll make him feel a bit better. Rosa. He played on to disadvantage there. Turner almost stole it back from him. High tackle. And the free kick's going to the Gold Coast. I see Sard's down sore as well. And that's not good. He's one of the really important players. Just had his head down in that tackle. Just cut one eye, very slow to get up. Cunnington was the player from north that came in high. I just stood up and he went back down. Sardi, he put the head down and it was almost self-inflicted. Oh, big That's a vintage Mount Jeski. They could get out here if he hits a target. Riscatelli. Paul. They're still taking it on. They're still confident. Heads wide. Sexton. Big shot. Play on your round. So Peter Wright inside 50. He's got him as an option. Goes toward Martin and dropping in the hole, Terrence. If they can just... That's the second time there's been a really poor kick that's, that's travelled well over the 50-metre attacking line by the Suns. If they can just clean up their inside 50 kicking... They'll be neck and neck. They'll be right at the level. Harbrow wants to come back inside. Ablett's playing out of the forward pocket at the moment. Try and get himself back running around to see how that calf or ankle is. He's not moving that well, though. Paul. Come here, Kane. Thank you. Oh, that's 50. That's 50. He's come from behind the mark. The umpire's missed that. Yep. Kane Turner came from behind the mark there and stood in front. That They've missed a real big one there. And they've been red hot on that all, all the opening four matches. We saw one of those last night. With very strict interpretation. Absolutely, that's that's one where the umpire's advisor or whoever's in the stand will send that message out to them. Police that a little better, please. Hall pressure on the kick. Now Chesky got a kick away, trapped by Zebel, and Brown is inside 50, screaming for it long. Brown's out. Well, Turner might see him now, or Del Santo, who could go for home Just from 50. Goes to the pocket to Brown, takes off, sees Harbrow, took oh. him on, and burn him off! 
Everything was wrong about that kick, Lynch. He should have just been stuck up in the air where he could have reached Jared Harbrow by about one and a half metres, but he put it on the deck, which I thought was going to bring Harbrow into it. That's right. If you're going to paint a picture of how Ben Brown was going to kick that goal, <laughs> that it wasn't, wasn't it. that. So, but very nice work for North Melbourne, just rebounding extremely well. And again, Zeeble getting involved, which is very important in the early stages of the game. Start back on the ground after that head knock, so that's good news for the Suns. Kept pointing to his neck, Lynchy, so there was a bit of a concern there early, but he's got back out there. Good on him. So back in the middle, and Ablett's back in the middle as well. He gets, or well, almost got the clearance. Wells wrapped him up. Del Santo flicks it out. Hot tackle, not bad. High tackle. Gee, everybody oh, stopped. Stop. Playing advantage. Higgins kept going, and now he's got an option out wide. Gibson, a roller. Gathered 50 out, ignored Lindsay Thomas, went to the square, good option, Petrie. Good hard work, got lost there. Uh, just got to get the ball quickly in the air, and they're very mobile. They're big men, Brown, Petrie and Waite, but they're, they're not standing under the ball. They're moving well, and this is exactly what happens. Petrie runs from a long way away, loses his man in congestion, and takes an easy mark. Plays his 300th game in a fortnight against the Saints. And they are looking nasty right now, North Melbourne. Good hard work there by Petrie. Ran from the spine of the ground. A little bit difficult to pick up in that congestion, but I think Day was responsible for him at that stage and just lost him through the traffic. And in the end, an uncontested mark. Well, Day is his matchup, so I think I don't Get think a look there's at it a here. handover. So Day started starts with him. So we're watching the down the ground action here. Petrie, there he is. He's already got there. Now, yeah, he was. I think he was even on the ball there. He came off the middle, out of the middle of the ground. Anyway, there's another one for the. Ruse and they're looking mighty dangerous. Ablett to Hall to Grant. Never mind him so far. He's given them a bit of movement as a lead up forward on this side of the ground. Back under his old coach, Rodney Ead, of course. First game for the Suns. Long, goal square. Peter Wright's there. Ball knocked straight down to Mount Chesky. Had more time. High, goal square. And not a good attempt to see it through. A similar kick a few years ago. Just the ice a grand final around the body. Didn't quite execute as well. Just feel it's, a, it's such a critical time of the game for the Gold Coast now. Yep. A couple more go against them. They're in all sorts of strife. Dwayne, you use the word fire starter a lot. They, they actually need one at the moment. They need something that's raw and guttural and even a real act of aggression or brilliance. Ablett could be the man. Ferrito smothered his first attempt. Goes long, goal square. Well, Lynch is going to fly from three deep. Got hands on it. But it's in danger of slipping away from them quickly here, the Gold Coast. Yeah, and on the back of where they got smashed uh, last week, there were a number of issues that were a major concern, and they just seem to be getting opened up a little bit now. Straight down the middle. Gibson Good sees it thumped away by McKenzie. He gets it back, and he can launch one. Bumped on the kick. Sard hunts it down. Gets there. Goes Puts the skates on. <laughs> oh, Centering kick yeah. was an absolute gem to Grant. That's a really good piece of play. The boy's a bit sore. He's come off, as Barry's pointed out, with a bit of a sore neck. He is the quickest runner I've ever seen for a bloke whose heel strikes the ground first. He's incredibly fast. Most sprinters are now up on their toes, but he's so fast, so his heel, he's got a heel strike first. Watch him in, in the bottom of the box. <laughs> That's really good play. 81 games for the Dogs. First one for the Suns for Grant. And he just slots it. That's very important for the Gold Coast Suns. I'm still trying to work out. I reckon the best runners in the world, actually, their heel strikes the ground first. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're, talking, <laughs> you're talking Olympic athletes. The <laughs> so footy's a different, a different cape. You've got to almost fall oh, no. into your run. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. But uh, really important. And good, good start for Grant. As you said, he's had a couple of uh, good touches. And uh, have a look at his uh, history. He spent a bit of time... Uh, the recent history, this is uh, North Melbourne and the Gold Coast Suns. The last three games have gone in favour of the Suns. 
And more importantly, Gary Abbott has had seven of nine votes that have been available in the last three games that have been won by the Gold Coast Suns. 11 points to North Melbourne, and there's been a few warning signs that they might just kick it away really quickly here on occasion. But I'm not that disappointed if I'm Rodney E. They're, they've still got a little bit to lift in certain areas. They might pay for it here. Right? Little nuts the back of Higgins. I think Jacob's got a piece of it. Harbrow goes back. Dangerous. Not well, the spot to be turning it over. Still the scramble. Petrie was there. Thomas tries to duck into a high one. And is that ball? And the reason I say that as we get this ball up is the college has any turnover. Yeah. The 50 metres in the middle of the ground the umpire missed. Two woeful entries inside 50. They're individual moments that are easily correctable. And they're right in this. Big five minutes coming up though. Sidestep Goldstein. That's why he's Except the Australian <laughs> number one. He is a superstar, and the reports are coming in that uh, he's played on Goldstein, um, on Curry, as you said, in a few of those pre-season and training yep. sessions. He has uh, absolutely smashed him in those pre-season games and drags him forward and kicks goals on him, and that's what he's trying to do here. He's trying to get Curry to defend. Exactly what we've seen Sinclair and Tippett do to their opposition ruckman, come out of the stoppage, push forward, and that is the All-Australian ruckman at his very best there. It's not super pace after he gets the tap going, but his hunt after the ball, his first step is instantaneous, yeah. isn't it? And that's what gives him the, the, set, the first dibs on the ball after he's tapped it forward. From the restart, Curry couldn't get the takeaway this time either, and North Melbourne another swallow long, brown. Floats oh, in, good set of hands. Well, that's, one, that's awful by McKenzie. Yeah, and that's one part of the story. The major issue is Gary Abbott's just limped out of the centre circle. He's limping into his defensive 50 now, and he's battling. So you see him hunched over there. This is going to be a major concern at quarter time, whether he actually comes back out. Looks very sore. This is for number three for the quarter for Ben Brown. Directly out, makes the goal on by work, and he yeah. misses. As Gary Ablett comes from the ground. He's just, he'll just make it to the edge of the ground too. Yeah, he's not exactly flying. So from this stoppage, he just gets another bit of a whack there from Goldstein in that contest and struggles as he grimaces. And he's still trying to make his way off the ground. Rosa takes off, but it's 18 on 17 until Ablett's replacement comes on. Almost a turnover. Turnover back again. They're out here. Little flick handball, Miller. Hall, oh, he could go all the way. There's no one in the square. Sliced it up, McMillan, great smother. Curry might get one back on Goldstein. Hands it off instead to Miller. Bounces it towards full forward. Thompson scrambles it away. And Ferrito is content to see that out. A little bit better game craft, and they, they score there, the Suns. Just didn't take the opportunity at the right time. You can tell that Daniel Curry he takes a fair wind-up to kick the ball. He was about four steps too long then. Miller, caught. Swallow. Barry Hall. Yeah, they've got 12 inside 50s, North Melbourne. Five marks inside 50 at this stage. And they've had nine shots of goal, so they're just doing it far too easily at this stage. And they've got to stop it in the centre of the ground, stop them from getting in there. Well, clearances are 8-4 in favour of North. That's the major concern. Rosa nuts the backside. Jesus, Martin caught, run down by Boomer. Hall flicks it back. Bump on the collar, Jasny kick. Goldstein, good knock away. The umpire said it was hell. Could look a pretty clean knock of the Sharon. Yeah, I thought it was a good contest, actually. Took Miller. Goldstein's just involved in everything at the moment. Yeah. Free kick was made. You could have had a little bit of a drive by a little bit more on Swallow there after the White. free kick. Yeah, they're starting to mark them, aren't they? Yeah. On the lead. Perfect conditions, as we mentioned in the opener. And the crowd's almost silent at the moment. Wait long. And getting back, Collar Jasny. Back in board. He sees Mount Chesky in the middle, has to hit him. Danger. He waited. Almost got a free. Oh, he's hit high too. McMillan. Del Santo. Goldstein running a mark at the moment. Petrie on the back pedal. Sees Brown. Hits him, nudged in the marking contest, umpire said okay. 
Gibson, Petrie, caught, got his arms yeah, free, yeah. scramble the kick, Turner floats in, not the required distance for a mark to be paid anyway. Atley, Boomer, Sexton, and finally a reprieve. Can Lynch take this? Thompson got there first though, and the kick from Archie. McDonald. And there's an eerie atmosphere here on the Gold Coast at the moment. Crowd a little disappointed with this as they would have been from last week after that performance. After three wins to start the year, horrible performance last week. And North Melbourne playing all over them here. Turner to wait. He'll have a shot from here. He's got this range. No. Gibson his target. Good thump away. Got a free kick. There's a hold on the jumper there. Not a lot in it, but the crowd aren't happy. I think uh, Miller has had a handful of jumper. He's not happy with it at all. Jamie, guys. Jamie, move out but again, please. that's what happens if you get isolated one-on-one. -on -one. The ball came in quick. You can give away free kicks. Just have a look at this holding contest. Left hand. He's got a handful of jumper. That's a free kick in modern football. The kicking goals this season. That's his eighth of the year. And the crowd aren't happy, and they'll be even more unhappy with us. See, Gaz still sitting on the sidelines, but uh, that long ball in, great lead again from uh, White pushing up the pushing up the field, and they're just starting to split apart the uh, Gold Coast Suns. Have a look at the ruse. This is where they sit in the AFL, obviously on top of the ladder, points four, averaging 123 points, and that's elite in the competition, rank one. Number one ruse in the league, and it looks if this continues on, they will go back to the top of the ladder. The big one for me is the number one for ball movement in the competition, and that's going to feed onto all the other areas, and that's predominantly scoring 123 points average per game. Little rake out was clever Hall to Rosa. Sees the leads come, goes toward Lynch. That's, and this is kickable. That's the first kick to real advantage forward to the centre into the Gold Coast uh, attacking 50. Inside 50 is 10 to the Gold Coast, 14 to North Melbourne. No but, breeze whatsoever, so it is kickable as you said, Dwayne. And this is huge for their confidence. If you can slot this on the siren at quarter time, give them some hope, some confidence heading into the second quarter they can bridge the gap. It's got well, plenty on it. Got it's gone. It. It's there. Inspirational goal from their number one man. That is such an important goal. The ball movement was very good, as you said. Good to the lead. Forced out wide because they're dominating the corridor, North Melbourne. But Tom Lynch takes that one nicely in the hands. And he's in great form. 17 goals, four for the season. And he's just full of confidence. He said, number one contested mark player in the competition. I'll go as far to say, right now, if I'm going to make a club, if I'm building a club to win next year and beyond, or even next week, first bloke I'm going to recruit into that club, give an open slather, is that bloke Tom Lynch. Yeah. And first class quality young fella as well, so he's going to mature into a great leader. 12 seconds left. Don't want to concede the clearance. Love to get one here, the Gold Coast. At least they've given themselves hope for that monster goal for the man who's leading the race for the Coleman as it stands right now. Wide ball, Zebel on the siren. But a stunned crowd here on the Gold Coast at Metricon Stadium. But North Melbourne, the top team in the competition, the undefeated Kangaroos, have come here meaning business. Six goal opening term, 6 4 40, plays 3 4. 22. Warm 30 degree day on the Gold Coast and North Melbourne too hot to handle in the opening term for the home team. Six goal opening quarter and it could have been more. Brown has a couple. Goldstein has a couple. And the Gold Coast Suns have a couple of problems. We'll head down to Barry Hall shortly but one of the big problems is Gary Ablett. How fit is he? We well, got the knock on the inside of the right calf and he looked pretty sore. He tried to get back out there, Duano, and it looked just as sore, if not worse, the second time round. 
He's the first incident. Gets a, a whack from Lindsay Thomas on that uh, shin or calf of his right leg. And then it was hit again later on in the centre circle. Getting the treatment, got the uh, bandage on. Here's the second incident. Goldstein just gives him a bit of a clip and very, very ginger. So uh, be interested in the next 30 seconds. Let's go downstairs to Barry Hall with Dean Solomon. Yeah, thanks, Lynch. Well, solely uh, Gary Ambler's come off a couple of times. I'll update on him. Just a cork in the calf. So we'll see how he goes. He might, he might play a bit more uh, forward time, but at the moment he's OK. And the forward half, the big tours for North Melbourne, really troubling you. You look to change up a few things there? Yeah, well, we're seven, so they're 7 1 out of the uh, centre best clearances, so that, they get first access to that. So we've got to tighten up in there and uh, get a bit more ruthless around the ground ball. Good luck. Cheers, mate. Too much to handle. It certainly is. Jared White, Drew Petrie, and Ben Brown, especially the two small forwards. But Lindsay actually can take a mark overhead as well. What is really concerning is when you have Mackenzie as, who's big enough, who's tall enough, who has enough reach to play as that third string tall defender, he's so used to delegating others to come over the top. He sat off on a couple of occasions, you see him punch his hand into his fist after the contest because he didn't go when he was required. And that's where those any one of those three tall targets up forward is going to get him and exploit him overhead. Even though he's tall enough, he's used to playing as a sub-size uh, third, up, third up player. Yep. Yeah. 18 point margin to start the second quarter. Goldstein back in the middle against his old teammate Daniel Curry in his first game for the Gold Coast. Curry, but straight down to Jacobs. Zeebel pumps it long. Brown, can he get up? Big crash of the pack. Eight guys went up oh, in the man. end. Saad with a shimmy, gets away from Thomas. Goes back to Harbrow. It was dangerous, but it looked good. Lonig in his target. And takes the mark. Wants to take off. They do like to come open side. And as we heard from Dean Solomon, they were down 7-1 in those centre break uh, clearances. So that was a major concern. Then the first bounce, they get <laughs> smashed again. Yeah. So 8-1 against. And Jasney Long. Peter Wright. There's the reach of 2-metre Peter. First game for the year. Heads toward Lynch. Can Wright. Lynch went up. Wright of North Melbourne went up and tried to knock it to a teammate. Rosa still a chance to collect it. Gibson, Ferrito, caught. Tarrant, again keeping it alive. Ferrito ducked for cover there. And, and he's, the umpire says gone. ball. Yep. Yeah, he's gone there. He just pulled the head in and <laughs> did the turtle. And just a long in strife here. And 50. So this might give them a bit of oomph here. 50 metre penalty. Well, had the shot probably from the top of the goal square. That's a really bad blue. Spud's running back and you can lip read those last words. What for? Tipping it would have come out of that same area, the goal. It would have been a little bit of critiquing of the umpire's decision there. It's a little shortish, the 50, from where they were, but umpire closer than us. Peter Wright. First game for the season, Good and he's played his way back into the team with hot form, and he started well today. That's two kicks now, he's absolutely flushed. Here's the free kick, good tackle. And Spudge tried to ride his arm up for the head high. Yeah, and now we'll see what he... Yeah. Oh, now you can't gesticulate to the umpire, that's it. He's pointed at the boundary umpire and said, I was ridden over, I was the ball's dead. dead. You cannot gesticulate towards an umpire. 50 metre penalty. That won't go down too well in the coach's box with Brad Scott. There's a couple of young bucks here, the Gold Coast Suns, who don't mind throwing it around and mixing it up, do they? Well, it's handy ah. for 200 centimetres as well. That's going to help. <laughs> yep. yeah, got a bit of throwing around there. A bit of leverage from the ball up. Ablett back in the middle. Can't get the clearance. Hall does almost. White court slung. That's a better fight by the Gold Coast in there. Zeebel got the last clearance from the centre bounce to start this quarter. They've been very good so far. Just at the back of the pack here again. Rose a third man up. Now, Curry gets a free kick against Goldstein this time. Both Ruckman look to the umpire in hope. Oh, Spud Ferrito's peeled back and he's just plonked himself in front of... Lynch. Here's Lynch. Almost and Ferrito. Good grab. Yeah, oh, free Thompson. kick for the nudge. So free kick to Lynch. Yeah, Scotty Thompson put the block on on Tom Lynch to allow 
Uh, the mark to be taken in front two, by uh, Ferrito. And the umpire felt that that was too obvious. Wow. He's now, just have a look it. here. He's just held him out of the contest. Uh, he's pushed him sideways without going for the ball. If he gets his hands back to the ball, yeah. he can almost get away with it and disguise it. He knew what he was trying to do, and he protected Spud. Kicked a monster goal on the quarter time siren. This is huge as well. And he sprays it to the right. But they're back in it. Yeah. Momentum back their way, even if the lead's not. Exactly what they needed to start this quarter. They lost the first clearance, but uh, since then, working well. Tarrant to Thompson. Riscatelli got back. Thompson read it well. Harvey. Goldstein. Boomer wants it back. Goldie says no. Lindsay Thomas took one of the marks of the year last year here. Gathers this. Browns forward. Gibson's lurking with the lead to the pocket. Heads in Petrie's direction. Almost. Spotted him well, though. Yep. Good matchup for them. And Wright got there with two efforts there. Lonigan takes off. Free kick. Plow advantage. Lynch hasn't got a lot to go to. Might have to hold this up. Great hard run. Russell. So Russell out in front. Atley and Russell. Atley's quick, though. Russell kept that alive for a split second, now it's out. He was stiff, Russell, the one bloke on the field who was going to be able to <laughs> shut him down. Sean Atley hasn't he got a set of slippers? Yeah, yeah they're fast wheels he, he possesses. But back the other end, as you said, it was a good matchup. Petrie had the one-on-one -on -one contest with Saar. Yeah. He'd be very disappointed he didn't grab that one. Game's gone up a gear. McMillan around the body. Saad gets there. Good second grab and takes off as he oh, loves to do. Straight to the goal square. From behind, Peter Wright, off hands, Archie, rolls it home. Raw talent. Another top draft pick out of, the, out of WA for the Gold Coast Suns. He has got some talent, a bit of class around half forward, and he's read that one well. But again, great work from Saad to take possession, then swing around, gets it in quickly. And enough of a contest from Wright. He didn't really get there, but he just put uh, Farido under a little bit of pressure to spill that ball and Archie comes through and finishes off nicely on the left. Good result. Really benefited there by the automatic play on by Saad yeah. and then Archie just recognised the millisecond where the ball bobbled in Spud Ferrito's hands, taps it out of his reach to regain it again while we'll soccer it through for a goal. 18 points was the margin at quarter time. Goldstein high. And they're getting some clearances now. Lonigan, beautiful blind turn. Ablett wants it. Put it out in front. Oh, out. Ablett's going to have to go. Farino wanted him. Took him down. White. Tucked up against the boundary. Goes back inside. Dal Santo. So, so young Jesse Lonigan too. The forwards demanding the ball when you're screaming that, that fast going forward. Huntington to Harvey. And just beyond his range, Burma oh, there, Brown in the goal Got square. Brown on Cameron deep. That's your one. That's your matchup. He's backing himself in. Yeah, he's, he's wanting Ben Cunnington to, in all terms, rack off so he can try and step <laughs> step around the man on the mark. Oh, he pokes that to Del Sando. Play on, not the required distance, and it didn't quite work the oh, plan. That's it, Dan Curry in the Perhaps. face. Yep. So that'll hands. wake him up. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. But he was never going to have that shot, was he? You just thought he, no. maybe he's going to dummy around the mark. Well, you see the wheels turning <laughs> upstairs, couldn't you? Saad straight Break down kick. the middle. <laughs> Martin inside. Riscatelli, good load up to Lynch out wide. Spot on with a 50-minute direct pass. And now they fan. Sexton might be his target. Ferrito, good punch away from Sexton. Ablett wrapped up Cunnington. Just got a handball away. Swallow court throws it away. Martin had a piece of it. Ablett goes back in. Little fumble. Lonigan flicks it wide. Oh. Now play on disadvantage, so it'll come back. Ablett's kick. But can he kick it from there? Just a little sharper at the moment after the quarter time break. The Suns. Get a look at this. Oh, oh drop the knees into the back. I tell you what, that. Well, they don't like that as a rule. <laughs> That's going to be looked at again in yep. we'll some hours to yep. come. And in a couple of minutes. Ablett 
This is another huge kick. They were out of this game 15 minutes ago. They were being demolished by North Melbourne, but they have got up off the canvas, and this to level the scores. Did it run, Scott? Struck it pretty well. It's drifting across the face. Thump through or behind. So the six inside fifties to three. Here's the free kick. Just oh, Cunnington's just dropped the knees into the kidneys of Gary Abbott. Obvious free kick. Hadley. At the very least, uh, didn't look great in slow mo. <laughs> they always do. It takes longer, Dwayne. Lynch gets there in front of White. Confidence rising here from the Suns. They've got, this is a good lock in now. Slides up for the square. Curry flies in. That's a good block by Town in front of the pack. That was, a, that was three packs. There was uh, 10 players, and that was a very good mark. Tarrant, new players were uh, the forwards for the Suns were coming. Good spot. Wait. Yeah, another good. good grab. He's grabbing everything at the moment. Super confident. That's not a great kick, though. Higgins. Used his body well, but Lemons, clever enough to see the boundary line was there. Used it. Yeah, that was a lazy round the body kick there for Wade. Had to get back. Have a look at the last 10 inside 50s and who's been driving the ball in. Tom Lynch at the top. So dominated there by the Suns. Curry doing better against Goldstein. Swallow flicks it out. Del Santo can't keep it alive. The crowd's starting to find some voice for the first time in this game after almost a silent first quarter. Curry again, straight down to Ablett. Starting to work for them. Rosa around the body towards Lynch's leap. Raked out, Swallow. Tarrant, Thompson, Dunn didn't have it. Yeah, he, he lost sight of the ball. That's 50. Oh, is it? Yeah, I think so. Okay, was it close enough? He certainly didn't stretch the arms out, Scotty Thompson, but... Yeah, watch him here. He, he takes Scotty Thompson. Now he's lost sight of the ball and he assumes he's still got it, so he goes through with the tackle. Correct decision. And this had a great throwback. I want to be sure of that one. Thompson. I don't know why you do that. You can take more time to throw it back, get it accurately. That's a great kick. Oh, well, spills it. I'm not sure it was meant for him. I think it might have been meant for Goldstein anyway. Nowhere to go forward. No one home. Little nuts to the back. Now, oh. big hip and shoulder, swallow on Rosa. Boomer Harvey, he's got one on ones ahead. He goes inside, he sits it for a while on Del Santo. Good spoil. Lonigan turns it back over. Higgins, Turner, McMillan. Higgins, time to use it wisely, keeps it low and post. Been a few of those. I think that's our fourth, fourth one on the woodwork for the day. Good spread from the contest from Higgins as well. He's worked really hard at that far side, just couldn't finish it off. Lemons. Intensity keeps lifting. 42 to 36. Call it Jasney. Shouldn't be that hard to get through North Melbourne's press or zone, whatever you want to call it, because it is spread from that kicker there. It is spread a good 90 to 100 metres, so there is gaps in it down the line. Curry floats in, right Petrie was front spot. The problem was, though, there was no movement from the Suns players ahead of the ball. Bump ball for Zeebel, and now, now Chesky couldn't quite get it to Hall. Petrie through his legs. <laughs> Bizarre. McMillan. Short, no free. Rosa lays the tackle. Let's have a look at the big fellas in the middle here, Lynchy. They're working really hard. And Daniel Curry's been working back into the contest. And, uh, I mean, obviously with the two goals, Goldstein's still in front, but a good contest at the moment. Disposal's 8-5 to five in favour of Goldstein. Straight down the middle. Martin got his arms free. Might have turned it over, though, McMillan. Couldn't quite pick it and run. Swallow. Higgins. Harvey. Almost the runners in the way. Atley. Back to Boomer. They've got the overlap. Wade can run on if he takes it. Boomer runs on with him. Short pass to Brown. Read it well, Dave. Little flick, Boomer. Back to Wade. Tucked into the pocket. 
opens it up, Higgins floats in. Beautiful. Goldstein had done all the work to get rid of his opponent, but Higgins just slipped in there. And this is a, I mean, they're, they're in front by a goal, but they need to stop the momentum of the Gold Coast Suns. If you, it, we looked at that one, and while it was happening, you had a mass of Suns players run, watch this in the box, watch how many are about, there you go, there's four within 15 metres, and the North Melbourne players are 25 metres out and come in with it. Yeah. So once you put a block on one of them, they were never going to get to the contest. To settle things down a little for the top team. Have a look at this. Not a great pass. I think, uh, as you said, Dwayne, good read from Sammy Day. Hit to a dangerous position. Goldstein again pushing forward, but Higgins over the top. But Jared White, let's have a look at his durability. And early in his career, his last five years at Carlton, 78 of the 138 games. But since he's been at North, 27 of 29 at 93%. And keep in mind, one of those games he was rested prior to the finals. So he's going along very beautifully at the moment. Not is he just playing great footy, but he's out there week after week. And he's laying more tackles than most key forwards during the season. Five and a half a game he's averaging, which is one of the reasons he's having such a phenomenal year. Peter Wright, inside 50. Great delivery to the pocket, just out of Archie's hands by McDonald. Keeps it running, and good crunching tackle by Sexton. To the umpire thought that was... Too hard a tackle. Oh, I think uh, it was a bit harsh then. Yeah. I think that was a legitimate tackle by Sexton over the line. He didn't dump him afterwards, so still in play. Here's the tackle. I think that's all right. The Pies are being very cautious in this one, paying a few softer ones. Day knocks it on. McKenzie bangs it. And Thompson might be content. He runs it through for a behind in the end. He didn't want to run low the boundary line, but uh, took a big right angle left. That's the anomaly in that room, isn't yeah, it? We, it is. we used to be tight for a little while on, on a rush behind. Now, you can't run it over the boundary line, but what is permitted on the uh, over the goal line is not on the boundary line. Well, shouldn't they be uniform? Well, if the word is deliberate, then it should have a uniform meaning. Yeah. yeah. Turnover. Miller puts it back to the hot spot. Lynch has got a couple of beat. Hands on it. Sexton the scramble. Oof. Not quite there, but again, as you were talking about, probably the most uh, the first player you'd pick if you were building a side. Tom Lynch sat under the ball, didn't take the mark, mm. but was strong enough to hold his opponents off and get the ball to the front. Generated the shot at goal. This is a good hold in here. I've done this a couple of times already. Brown comes up and he's beaten by two men of Peter. Hands it off to Saad. Thumps it again in Lynch's territory. Few down there, Martin Lynch, Ablett lurking for the crumb. There's a through for another behind. Tom Lynch not happy at all. Scotty Thompson, as Barry Hall can attest, is a niggling type defender. Slightly undersized and he'll, he'll try to body spoil you, keep you under the ball, hold you. And uh, he can get under your skin at times. Well, Tommy Lynch it. is not, not the one to cope with that too well either. So no. we know he's a bit fiery, which is great. Yeah. We'll keep an eye on that. And you cope with it extremely well too, Baz, I've got to say. Peter Wright takes the mark. Second, Second time. time. Second time he's worked Ben Brown under the footy, and it's a lock into the forward line again. This is be really pleasing, Rodney. Ed. That's a and a little nudge. A big nudge. Yeah. We're under siege here, though. Again, the ball's just bouncing in and out of the forward 50, the Suns. Well, they've restricted North Melbourne's ability to transfer the ball yeah. from defence through the, to their own half-forward line. The clearance is the other thing too, 11 apiece at the moment, so they've evened up that, which we know was a big factor in the first quarter. Yeah. Free kick yeah, 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 yeah. 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 You've got to go at it. Even if you want to put your body in the way, you have to at least let the umpire think you're having a go at the ball in the air. And again, this is another forward half turnover for the Suns. They're doing this really well. Automatic play on. Lemons. A little the nudge there. Well, the kick was affected, so it should be where the push was made. It's not a down the field. Well, I'm playing. Good get. Gaz in the square on Thompson. Colin Jasny. This is good. It's almost like good quarry for 
North Melbourne at the moment. They, they've got it locked in their fall. Oh, Chris Kelly! He turns back the clock. <laughs> Where did he mark like that? Well, Zeebel and Del Sando looking at each other, thinking, well, yeah, I mean, one of us should have gone a touch harder. It's a, good, it's a really good test for North Melbourne. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. Great work from uh, the Suns. They've worked the way in it with contested ball and their clearance work. And play like this. Eyes firmly fixed on the ball. Good grab. It's good Struck it beautifully. That was never in doubt. They're on the way back, all right. That's 13 inside 50s to 6 in this term. And the clearances is something that's been a major concern for the Gold Coast in the first quarter. But have a look at the last 10. Dominated by the Suns. Miller Hall Ablett. Good spread for the Suns players. No one has had to double up. And uh, that's where they need to continue to dominate. So in the first quarter, it was 6-9 in favour of North Melbourne for clearances. In the second quarter, it's now 5-2. And it's swung about. It's the Gold Coast who got the 5. And it was 7-1 in the centre clearances. Let's see how this one pans out. Bit happening. So free kick, North Melbourne. And someone's entered the square too early. Sin. Swallow. What about Rosa? Hall, backs tracks. Couldn't get there to get a fingernail on it. Wells, Hamble smothered. Gibson. Higgins, time to size it up, heads toward goal and got it. Instant reply. Isn't that brilliant when you've got a player who can turn, I'm not even going to call that a half chance, a quarter chance into a goal. That's what they lacked up in their forward line two to three years ago. Goes to the contest, peels out the back when he sees he can't get it again. It feeds out to him, three steps and he can... Book that around. Less than a half chance and he nails it. That's a really good finish on the back of a mistake. You can't run into the square too early. That's no good. Higgins, Brown, Wright and Goldstein all two apiece. A nice finish. Higgins with their only two goals of this quarter for North Melbourne. A diddly by 24 points. The Kangaroos if you've just joined us. Wells to Atley. Floats it long, Gibson, Rosa, ball in. Andrew Swallow's having some sort of quarter. He, while they were under siege a bit at the other end, he was holding the minute. He had six possessions before they hit the scoreboard in this second quarter, Andrew Swallow. Worked really hard. Rosa kicks mother, Harbrow. Now Chesky, clever hands. Grant, oh, Ooh. horrible hands. Cunnington, Wells, Grant tries to trap it. Lonergan had a piece of it. Saad can't back out of that gang tackle. That's got a little perplexed. They led by 24 points. Ablett was off injured and it was all coming undone. Ablett's back out there getting some possessions. And the home team's back in it. McDonald stripped. Well, they're running Petrie further up the ground now. North Melbourne, he's getting... He's pushing back beyond the ball. He's still playing as a forward. But he's trying to clear it out so that Ben Brown has Clay Cameron one out inside 50. Wells free in the back. This is where they're just falling down a little bit, struggling with the big forwards to mark as much as we would have thought in this uh, second term. Lindsay Thomas, in fact, right drops in front of Thomas. And there's the one. Between the big three forwards, they took six marks in the first term and just have struggled to get uh, a one-on-one -on -one contest in this second term, but this is exactly what they need. Good movement from White and, and an even better pass from Wells. So what the three are doing, Petrie... A little bit worried about the way that the Gold Coast Suns have gone this quarter. So he's going up beyond the ball, taking Day with him, the biggest defender, and he's leaving the other two forwards exposed, uh, sorry, exposing the lack of size in Gold Coast back line. Drifts across the face. So Petrie's almost sacrificing himself to become that behind the ball extra T 
taking Day out of the action zone where he can use that big body to, to assist some of the more smaller or shorter defenders. Saad to Peter Wright. He's looked pretty good. Got knocked away by Atley at the last second, but he had good purchase on it early. Swallow, run down to the goal square. Wake can't get there. Thomas can't get there. Thought he was about to pounce. Wells having a spell. It was about this time in the opening term. Gold Coast started playing their way back into it. Riscatelli. Down Sando up high. Every player within one kick of this ball right now. Archie lays the tackle. So what we're looking at now, just inboard to the right-hand side of the screen, you see that Petrie has taken... There he is, in the middle, right in true centre forward. He's not going forward with the footy. So that means Day's big body is not going to be where the quick kick goes. Malczewski to Miller. Back to Malczewski. Umpire said it was still in. With the spill out. Right, about to send it forward. Yeah, they need to get it in quick. And a good spot to hit. Waits on the march. Fist away McKenzie. Second effort superb. Just knocked it away. Middle of the congestion. Saad takes off. Underground handball. Hall wrapped up. Knocked away. Riscatelli. Day. McKenzie. Oh, they're out now. Hits Ablett. And he runs. Hall to the open wing. Horrible kick. Goldstein should get there. Bumped on the marking contest oh. according to the umpire. What was that for? He's sitting with the shepherd. That was a genuine marking contest, I would have thought. So Malcheski was going for the mark, not the bump. McMillan runs through 50, goes for home, and it sails over the goal umpire's hat. Well, the fans aren't happy at all. I would and say with good reason. Yeah, Watch this. I thought Malczewski was in the market contest. Maybe a little late, so they felt that he's jumping to the but front. But he didn't, he didn't He's pay. hitting on the front when I suppose Goldstein's trying to take the mark. That's the only but thing he that he on, checked him. And the ball was still bobbling around in his hands. Still a marking contest as it bobbles. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. So he's got him from the front. So on replay, I think that's the right decision. But they were good enough, McMillan, to finish it off. So good work. Well, that's why we have more than one person in, in commentary because I reckon that is a desperately wrong decision. All right, she's Depends on it half time. No, it's more a case of where Malczewski's eyes were. If they were on the yeah. ball, then it's a marking well, contest. Aren't you allowed to look at your opponent in the contest? You can't jump in front. Well, what if, what if you, you apply correct pressure? You can't mark the ball when you're looking at your opponent, can you? Riscatelli from 60. Heads to the goal square. Peter Wright down there. Ferrito Wright had a good piece of it. And Ferrito knocks it through. He's putting some uh, stress into the minds of uh, yes. North Melbourne defenders. He is a big, big man, Peter Wright. Shown that he can mark the ball over his head. Just saw Aaron Hall on the bench. Looks like he's getting his uh, lower left calf treated. They go man on man here, Gold Coast. It is old fashioned man on man for this kick in. Goldstein under it. Petrie right with him, as he has been for most of the evening. Oh, Scrams one high. Lemons caught high. Feeds it off to Ablett. A wobbler. Tough to mark. Impossible for Wright to even get there for North Melbourne or Wright. Well, it does, eh? the Gold Coast. Gives Gaz a chance to get down there for this clearance. And we know he's really dangerous in any clearance situation, especially inside 450. Scrambled away. Oh, huh? McMillan. Swallow in some trouble. A three metre kick. Lynch tried to keep it in front. Back from Swallow toward the wing. Petrie running hard. He's got weight for him. And he's got the overlap runner. Atley tapped to his own advantage. Took on McKenzie. Oh, tried to that. shake and bake. But he didn't shake. <laughs> Bounces to McMillan. It was really good though, Dwayne. Absolutely. Harbrow. And the game's lifted a gear again. One end to the other. Long kick toward the wing. Just knocked away well, to Archie. Lindsay. Archie couldn't keep it in. That was super by Lindsay. It was. There's, there's so many times we, we give him a little bit of a bake because he does the glorious things and sometimes he, he, he just lets himself go away from the hard stuff. 
Oh, he's, he's had a pinky trot on. His skipper just jumped on the floor. Two minutes left in the quarter. Curry and Goldstein. Rosa to Ablin. Caught by McMillan. Wells. Atley yeah. and Zeebel is through. Oh, goes all the way. He's got the goals or Brown. Who does he want? Open goal square. Heads for home. No. Oh. A back in there from there. Well, he's... Wasn't a beautiful play away from the stoppage though? Yeah. Super stuff by North Melbourne. He'd drawn Clay Cameron and started coming to him, so he had the Brown pass on, but uh, chose to have a shot and missed. Rosa. Oh, that's there. Oh, that there. Last week, it was play on. Well, Turner held him up there, and the umpire said, I'm going to let you hold him, even though you're not allowed to, because it probably wasn't 15. This is... It's almost like we've relaxed back with the, the, the manning of the mark. We saw... Can Turner do it in the first quarter and didn't get pinned for 50? Sard, long kick, Lynch, Thompson. Well done, Thompson. Worked him under the footy there. He's not going to outstretch him, so he had to work him under the ball and make it very difficult for him to mark it. Hadley made it tough for Ferrito. Off Wells. Sard tracks him down. Both went to ground. Miller, Abel, dying seconds of the half. Riscatelli, the flick on. Late one to be huge here for the Gold Coast. Got a late one heading into quarter time to get their confidence up again. North Melbourne's outplayed them for the last few minutes. Thank you guys. 39 seconds left. Peter Wright runs back to the goal square. If it gets there, he's got a good matchup. It's going to go the other way for North. Wells toward Day and Petrie. Maybe one last chance for North now. Petrie looks up and they run. Goldstein's his runner. Well, see, but he might own them one. He goes for the short pass instead. Wait. Goal square. Oh, he's Brown, he waits on. for the bounce. Oh, risky. He had an eternity. <laughs> In the end, he's done the right thing. He's just worried that he's going to let that ball bounce. A big uh, off break goes through for a behind, but they work this well again. And again, Zeebel working very hard forward of the ball. And it's panned out all right. Well identified by Jared White. This is where we all got nervous. Yeah, <laughs> Good that stuff. bounce can do anything. Just ask Milne. That's right. Big <laughs> Benny Brown. And the big men just starting to impose themselves again. The last 10 scores. You notice how that uh, Petrie's mark up on the wing again. So he's just... He's never going to be a decoy because he's too good a player, but he is making sure that he drags Day away from defensive 50. Playing more as that link yeah. half forward, high half forward. Yeah. Ten seconds left. Time enough for something crazy. Rosa flicks it back. Turner comes hard. Caught. Del Santo couldn't get a hack kick forward. Bizarre kind of quarter. North Melbourne at one stage led this game by 24 points. The Gold Coast played their way all the way back to a three-point deficit. And after being 18 up at quarter time, North Melbourne lead at half time by 22 points. Back to you, Sandy. Good on you, Dwayne. Thank you for that. Yes, 18 points at the first change and stretching it with that last goal out to 22 at the long break. If you've been out for the day and haven't caught up on Sydney and West Coast, I can tell you that Sydney were successful in that game as well, eventually going on to record a pretty emphatic win by some 39 points. The players obviously delighted when they got back into the rooms and belted out the song. Points the margin at quarter time, 22 at half time. Ben Brown getting in the action, so to, I think this is what you call a swallow dive. But the Kangaroos at the moment holding sway, but anything could happen in the second half. For their interpretation of the first half and what may unfold in the second, let's head back to Metricon now and get the thoughts of Dermot Brereton and Dwayne Russell. Boys? 
Thanks, Sandy. Strange kind of game. It looked as if a couple of times that North Melbourne were going to break away. Gold Coast played their way back in, and it does seem as if Gary Ablett's going to be a huge factor in the second half of the years in every game that he plays in Durham. Is he fit? Is he not? Watch Lindsay's left leg. It comes through and clips Gary on the inside of his right calf, and he gets a bit sore out of that. He goes off, gets a little bit of ice treatment, then he gets a bit of punishment from the opposition. This is Kane Taylor. Oh, sorry. <laughs> It's not, yeah. Taylor's not playing, yes. Uh, and watch here, he gets the other one again. He went off then halfway through that second quarter once more. Spud had a, a, a go at him. A little bit of a drive-by there from Jacobs. And this one, that says more about Cunnington. We've got to call it as it is. I think Ben Cunnington will get a please explain and might even get a little bit of uh, action on that. Ablett seems to be warming up, though, doesn't he? He does. He got better. Look at those possessions in the back half of that second quarter. He has six of them in quick time then. So I reckon he's, he's sort of adjusted because it's a bruise. It's not a strain. It's not a, a, anything you know, it's really bad. It's a knock on the calf, yeah. and he's getting used to playing with it. He could get back to uh, full capacity in the second half. Is that a few things take your fancy? I have, and there, there's one... Uh, I've, I've really thought that the uh, Suns have made some juvenile errors in terms of football. Now, what happens is when you're a defender and you're an extra, you go to where you look at where the football is, and then you draw an imaginary line between there and the goals. Now, if we stop the Suns right about there, we look at the, all those Suns players. They've tried to get between the ball and the goal square. They're all goal side, but they leave the most dangerous man in the middle of the field completely exposed by himself, and that's a real junior rookie error. Yeah. One of the great forwards of the game here, and we've got a couple downstairs as well. Alistair Lynch and Barry Hall. How are you seeing it, boys? Uh, thanks, Dwayne. Dwayne, it's yeah, certainly been an interesting first half. In particular, we want to focus on the key forwards and, and from North Melbourne. They were always going to stretch uh, the, the Gold Coast Suns defence. Day, McKenzie and Cameron are the ones that go back. Forward 50 marks, 9-4 in favour of North Melbourne. Bates. Yeah, Jared Waits done a lot of damage. He hasn't hit the scoreboard yet, but he's taken seven marks. This guy just keeps continually getting out the back. His running capacity for his size is, is unbelievable. And Drew Petrie, he's been outstanding too, playing that sacrificial role, running up the ground. He's not getting rewarded for it on the scoreboard. He's kicked one goal to this stage, but geez, it doesn't go unnoticed. It just seems to be at this stage, if it's not one, it's the other. They just seem to be popping up. Yeah, absolutely. And Goldstein pushing forward as well, really stretching the Gold Coast in the ruck division. Let's have a look at the top five marks inside the forward 50 on the ground. See Waite leading the way there with Drew Petrie. And for, conversely, for the Gold Coast Suns, Lynch looks dangerous with Martin Grant. And big two-metre Peter looks like he can take good contested grab. Well, he's been great, two-metre Peter. He's come in and done a great job. Uh, uh, Tommy Lynch being the, the inform forward of the competition. So it's no surprise that he's taken some marks inside 50. Can you see the Gold Coast Suns getting back in this? I think they need a couple of goals very quickly after this halftime. We'll grab a break here at Metricon Stadium at halftime. It's North Melbourne leading the Gold Coast Suns by 22 points. Suns faded on a perfect afternoon into a delightful evening here on the Gold Coast at Metricon Stadium. And the home team still alive, played their way back within three points of North Melbourne in the second term. 22 points the margin with the second half about to get underway. But the big question is Ablett and Jacobs. Does Jacobs stay on Ablett or does he go to the number one possession winner on the field for the Gold Coast Suns, Aaron Hall? Well, I reckon you've got cases to mount to say he should go to Hall. Hall's up to 73%. He's had the most possessions for the, the Gold Coast Suns. But the fact that they're 22 okay. points ahead, don't split up your winning hand, your winning formula. So I reckon you, you'd probably swallow that, take the loss in that area, and, and, and back it in that you're going to win by 44. If I agree with you down. totally. The situation of the game, stay with Abbott and see if he can clamp down on Hall in other ways, but Ablett can be very dangerous. So 22 points up, go as is. And Hall's come from the field again. He came off really late in that second quarter. So we'll keep an eye on that and we'll see if there's any issue there. Ablett starting outside the square now. So Curry and Goldstein to go at it again. The two old teammates head to head. Good bounce to start the second half. Goldstein a palm, secondary knock. Jacobs, Adley yeah. yeah. with some space. Just over Waits' head, he was nudged a little. Boomer couldn't quite get a handball up. Lindsay Thomas and Saad, a toe poke to his own advantage. 
almost too fast for his own good. He held it one-handed before he handballed on. That was so clever. Lonigan Riscatelli, who was clever to give it back to Lonigan, who he knew was out of play and ball in. Riscatelli delivered out of bounds with that, as you were saying, Dermot, great play from Adam Saad to actually get the ball out of that forward 50 or Jeez, defensive well 50. We saw him on the way in. Mum was on board and his younger brother, youngest kid ever to wear aftershave. I reckon that lad, his younger brother. Oh, yeah. There's Aaron Hall on the bench. Yeah, his younger brother was looked at that seven or eight and he, had a bit he of smelled very good. Had a bit of cologne on. <laughs> New age kids, though, Derm, starting yeah. early. Ball about to be put back into play here on the half forward flank, early stages, third term. This was first and fifth on the ladder at the start of the round. North Melbourne, obviously. Number one team in the comp, the undefeated top of the ladder, North Melbourne. And they stay undefeated, and the only undefeated team in the comp. Great kick. Zeebel. Well Harbrow. Yeah, well read from Harbrow. It was a very good kick, but uh, Harbrow read it very well off the boot. Miller, good fist away at me, although he had Sexton out there lurking. He got the spare back north. Oh, he thumps a monster inside 50. Lynch goes up, yeah. tries to take them all got down. It. It's a free. Yeah. But that's all right. He stopped the ball. He slow played it now. So it's up to the rest of the Suns to get there and try and seize them up. This is an easy kick to and true centre half. And mate. you want your big forward making a contest like that because Thompson had put a block on, essentially. Yep. He disguised it a bit better than her in the first quarter. But uh, man on man everywhere ahead. Harvey. Del Santo has pulled a couple of those kicks last second. To Del Santo to Cunnington. Saad nearly knocked it away. There they go out the back. McDonald long. Lindsay Thomas lurking inside 50. Good contest. Higgins. And the scramble. Rosa. Harbrow. Oh. Accidental fumble out of play. He lost the handle on that one. It was. He was darting all over the place and then just uh, threw it over the fence, basically. What do you mean? He's going to go three, four different ways. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you can fake it, yep. you can get it out of play deliberately. Jacobs went to Jack Martin at the last stoppage. Saad again, the shimmy. Rosa, Ablett, Saad, danger, Petrie. Tries to shrug, that's gone. <laughs> Ablett plays on to advantage, Riscatelli, and they peel. He's got Peter Wright, who has no one ahead of him. He can take an eternity here to find an option. Lynch. Up, got oh, it. What a stretch. That is a very good mark. Right about, I reckon, half a second before it got there, Scotty Thompson would be thinking, he'll be jumping soon. <laughs> I think he, he would have been thinking, I'm protecting the drop of the ball here. I've got the good body. And then the big reach of Tom Lynch came over the top and just snatched that one out. That's why he's the number one contested marker in the game. The number one goal kicker in the game. The leader in the race for the Coleman. Doesn't and he's kept the minute. Doesn't mind that side at all. He might have just run past uh, Scotty Thompson. A little whisper in the ear. Just remind him how easily he took that uh, mark as well. There's the Drew Petrie free kick. And quick play on. That's when the Suns are at their best. When they go off half back quickly. And here it is. Scott Thompson protects the drop zone. And then the re reach over the top. Couldn't get within foot of that. Nice finish by Tom Lynch. Just continues on his merry way. You saw the negatives of two monster-sized key forwards at both ends of the ground. Drew Petrie, wonderful competitor. But once you get a little bit of a pin on him, slow hand to foot, and then Peter Wright at the other end, a little bit more dexterity, he would have kicked an open goal off that. Time down from Goldstein. Martin was held. He would have got the clearance anyway. Using it short. Rosa. Don't mind that. That'll pull them out and make space. Grant. Hands off. Call it Jasny. Keeps it low. Keeps it wide. Doesn't score. Does score. Just a behind. Keeps the ball a lot better than that. But good pressure again from North. They're up and about the Suns. The early stages of this third term. Higgins. Atley. And he puts the speed on being chased but he's not being headed long kick Lindsay Thomas gets back on McKenzie Lindsay well read clever beautiful <laughs> early jump Lindsay did he mean to mark that that's hitting <laughs> he, he almost like he jumped early 
and, it, and the body, the oncoming body, <laughs> rode him into yeah, the drop did. of the ball. He took, I think, was a mark of the year a couple of uh, years ago here. Same spot. It's a very similar spot. Early jump. Let's have a look where he jumps from. Yeah, bro, it rides him back a metre or so. Yeah, very, very nice. These are big Bombay bloomers too, aren't they, these shorts? Lindsay Thomas. He's kicked two goals from ten shots this year. He's running at 20% with his goal shooting. And he's missed that as well. So two goals from 11 shots. Well, after having the yips probably three years ago, he's been pretty good the last uh, two that's, years in front of goals. That was a good strike. So he, he's just got to reassess now. So, right, I've, I've struck it all right. Just didn't go through. So he's obviously aiming up wrong. <laughs> you reckon the wind knocked it about? <laughs> no, he, he hit it where he ran. McKenzie keeps that low. Terrence in a good spot. What's what, what's wrong with your goal kicking is if, you, if you're hitting them skinny yeah. or you're getting them out of the instep, then you're starting to think, what's wrong with my technique? But yep. he hit that all right. Tarrant to a good spot as well. They all float in. Petrie, Wait, oh, all had a piece of it. Not enough of it, according to the umpire. Brown tries to burst his way through. Oh, he's Dropped out. it. Gone. The three big men were involved. Petrie and Wait spoiled each other. Then big Benny Brown. Probably not the ground level player you want. <laughs> I thought Petrie was, had enough of it there. Yeah. A bit stiff then to have that one not awarded. Grant wide to Sexton. Good second grab on right. Turnover, Dalsetto. And this could hurt. Wells looks up, he's got Higgins. Harbrow got back. And it might work for them now. Rosa is out and he's got Ablett out wide. He fumbled it. Ablett's still there feeding for him. Jack Martin's down the line, if he can put a shimmy oh, on here. He turned weight inside out. So Martin on the wing. Again the short kick. Maintain possession, Lonigan. Was that 15? That's just gone past the man on the mark. I like Lonigan's game, though. He's made a couple of errors by foot, but I really like the way he's gone about it. It's plenty on that. Big Peter Wright goes up, uses the fist, keeps it in the area. Aaron Hall just come back onto the ground, but what about Matty Rosa? The leading position getter on the ground got 18 at this stage. He's just a quiet achiever. He is, and uh, Rodney E to be very frustrated. Oh, there he goes. Just thought he'd leave the uh, building. Poor old Rocket, game 600. Zeebel. <laughs> Lemons dragged down by Lindsay Thomas. Day. Call it Jasney. Hits a good spot. Lynch crunched by Ferrito. Atley caught. Down Sando. Gets away from Sexton. Not a lot to go to. Has to wait. He wants the boundary line. Nothing sure. Hall just off the bench. Should be reasonably fresh. Swallow cuts him down. Does he shrug the tackle? Got a handball away. Collar Jasney. Russell. Sexton. Back to Russell. Stripped by Zebel. Wells. Zebel. Brown. White's got a good matchup in the middle of the ground. Rose has gone back to pick him up. The tired North, they've got plenty of numbers behind the ball at the moment. They're taking a long time to get the ball from half back into a position where they can really be offensive. Like this. So the turnover perhaps. Still in the area. And the free kick. It has been a warm day, 30 degree day. Lonigan out wide, got it. Had a shot from here in the opening turn. Ablett, beyond his range, takes on Ferrito. Has he got it in him? Drives it long, misses. They're pressing. They are. They're playing all over North Melbourne just at the moment. North look tired. Too many numbers in their back half just at the moment. Struggling to get forward of the ball. Jacob's having a look at the side there. On the bench when Ablett got onto that ball. So... He's looking that dangerous, you might just go out and redeploy him, I reckon. The hard part is he's probably better on Ablett when he's fresh. After a spell. Zeebel. Brown, can he get up? Well Lynch, done. Front spot. Yeah, very well done. Was day. Day. Hands it off the hall. Spears that. Russell, dragged down by Zeebel. Swallow, jumped on. Excellent. Just hanging in there, North. But well, they can't get the ball 
forward of the true half back line with any fluidity. They're not getting link possession or, or easy use of the footy. That's his second quarter. I talked about it during the, the progress of that second quarter. 11 disposals, oh. 7 contested possessions. And oh, he's been pushed out there, I'm not sure. But I think to go on with your point, no overlap run or options in the forward half. They look, appear tired. They, they appear do fatigued yeah. at the moment, so you're not getting that wave of support moving forward. Did have a limited on field pre game warm up as well, the Kangaroos, due to the heat. Rosa hands it off to Riscatelli to Ablett. Starting to look more and more dangerous by the minute. Hall breaks away. Ablett crunched by Thomas. Hits a good spot with that kick though. Lynch! <laughs> How good is he? I told you, Lynchy. He is the number one player you would go out and get if you got open slather on the league yep. to build a club. He didn't look like uh, missing that mark, and he had to jump over big Peter Wright. And this is a very good jump. A couple deep, some quality defenders in there as well. And that was all Tom Lynch. See how high his hands are above everybody else's when when he actually strikes at the ball. Coming off a five-goal game last week, he's got three this evening. Well, his confidence is up and about, and uh, he should be because the midfield just starting to get on top for the Gold Coast Suns. Plenty of inside 50s in this quarter. The little master gets one in again. You just, oh, big uh, you just can't teach that. That is just quality contested grab. And it is at the highest point. He had a, a hand span above everyone else. Absolutely. Let's have a look at these last inside 50s. The 10 inside 50s. And that is... That's really good if you're a Gold Coast player, uh, a supporter. Not too many North Melbourne names there. No. Got to get back on here, the Roos. Just joined us. 24 points was the biggest margin North Melbourne's held. And the Gold Coast haven't led this afternoon. And the kick forward, Day, who's doing well. Harbrow, Lemons, full of run still. Back to Lemons. Archie. Rosa gets under that a little, and it's too wide, perhaps. Miller was half held, so Miller a free kick here. What's happening now is North Melbourne got the extra spud for Edo, trying to get in front of Lynch. Lynch got a big hand on it. Cunnington, Thompson, under siege right now, North. Thompson bangs it in the brown direction. He's up. McKenzie's gone down. No free. Crowd screaming. McMillan, no one ahead of him. Might have to go himself. Looks up. Day cuts him down. It's all about the roll. Tumbles across the face and Saab should cut it down. Good pick up on the move. No launch from here. Superb. And away. Yes, that is Boomer. scintillating. Boomer says, give me the hand, boys. I'm 38 <laughs> years of age. <laughs> Wasn't that wonderful? And Boomer, you know what? He did not give up on it either. That was just wonderful to watch. He's just calling him from some pussies, not support. <laughs> Respect your elders. <laughs> All about to thump it forward. Lynch, can he get there for the chest mark? Just up the way, last second. Oh, that's a He's mark. mark. Take Peter the Wright. mark. He can, he'll put it through 15 rows from here. Yeah. Guys, Lynch's presence is having an effect on the game here. And the reason being is that North Melbourne are popping uh, Ferrito back as an extra. So they're literally playing two yeah. on Lynch. And he's still playing well. The extra who, who, who is... Burrito's opposite number is around the midfield and that's why they look like they've got more run. I reckon you almost throw it up and say, you know what, Lynch is going to towel us. Let's match him in the middle at least. He's looked good in his first game for the season, oh, yeah. Peter Wright. And again, post high. And again, it's a three-point game. No, six rows back again. Yeah. But it is a concern that they are the defence of North Melbourne is the chase from uh, Harvey, but we'll applaud the, the run from Saad. Have a look at him. Both players going wants flat him, out. Too, he, he wants him, but he's just thinking, any danger of someone coming at me. <laughs> just someone. Uh, it's great vision there, but here's the two-on-one situation. Tarrant goes in to support Thompson, and off the toe. Fortuitous. Big Peter Wright just flushed that one six rows back. Fortuitous, that goal. Let's have a look at the metres gain now. Peter Wright 
That's they're three all, kicks. They're all <laughs> kicks. <laughs> That's exceptional. Atley, obviously, with the run and carry, and, and Zeeble keeps getting the ball and thumps at 60 every time he gets it. Swallow. Cunnington. McDonald. Petrie forward, wait forward, clears the pack. Zeeble resting at full forward. Couldn't trap it. Jacobs. Oh, vision. <laughs> and Lindsay Thomas, superb there. He saw Higgins backtracking out the back. He did, spot on, Dwayne. He identified that Higgins was a chance. He dropped off the contest and just slapped it on the boot to wobble one through. And you back Higgins in from here. He's been very good with his two goals. Nice. Just a magnificent user of the footy. He's, yes. he's as good as you'll ever see. It's, it's copybook action, the way he kicks the footy. Rodney Ed would know him well, of course, the Gold Coast Suns coach. who coached him at the Dogs. This to stretch the margin again. Every time the Gold Coast get close, the Kangaroos find one. Well, they needed that. It was three goals to nil in this quarter and an avalanche of disposals and forward 50 entries. Watch Lindsay Thomas here. Identifies Higgins, drops out the back. Quickly identifies it. Just pokes a wobbly old punt. Just over to Higgins. And there's that copybook text, uh, that textbook uh, style of uh, right foot kick that you just described, Dermot. Beautiful Second kick. Second goal where he's gone to the contest, wheeled out real quickly, and the ball's got to win for a goal. Sydney, the Swans live Sydney Swans winning today, Alistair, so... Yeah, good win over the West Coast Eagles. North Melbourne, if it stays as is, will go back to the top of the ladder. There's a lot of game left in this. Cunnington, One. kick that backwards. Good trap, Del Santo. Swallow, McDonald. McKenzie up, Petrie up way early. Goldstein on the run, feeds it away. Higgins again, unselfish. Jay-Z from the goal line. Yeah, very nice work. The tap of Goldstein. His taps usually result in clearances. Have a look at the work from Goldstein here. Just to, the ball goes over the back. Just gets a tap or a handball out into space for Higgins. And then an easy goal. Really quick after trailing three goals and nil in the term. Back-to-back -back goals. It was a tap from Lindsay Thomas that was very good. But the fact that he followed it down that far. Well, that's what he's spreading from the contest now. From yeah. the centre contest running forward. Last ten scores from C. Zeeble. Higgins just kicking away with North Melbourne again. A bit of breathing space. Goldstein against right this time. Hit a right with a toe. Ablett dragged down. Cunnington. Swallow. Dal Santo. That's Petrie. Yeah, that was a hold. Missed that one, the ump. Lemon loops it to Harbrow. Martin. He went inside delightfully on Harvey. Riscatelli! Oh, that'll hurt. Heavy. That'll hurt. And he went for the ball. He might have hooked an arm. But that will hurt. Hand it off the hall. Who gets the oh, skates sweet. on. He sizes up the big sticks. Loads up hey, over Lynch's head. Let go. And and Barry Hall, you're at ground level. We saw Peter Wright's last goal down there. So we see that big hit. We saw it bend sharply as we watched it right to left. Is there a, And the flag's picked up in that pocket. Just above Scotty Tony. Is there a bit of a breeze picked up to that end now? Just very slightly, Dermy. Uh, right to left of screen, so it's just a slight breeze, but as you said, uh, it does affect the ball a little bit. Wait. McMillan. Just steadied, haven't they, North Melbourne? Just got a little bit of professionalism into their game as well, and Goldstein stepped up and just involved himself outside of the centre square, and it's steadied the ship. So Petri the target, Day with the fist. Del Santo with the trap. Zebel on the run. He's got Lindsay Thomas. He owes him one. Lindsay all the way home, you'd think. Some indecision, but not really. Always going to drill it. We just saw from that far side uh, marking contest, I think it was Cole Jasney left his man. He spoiled in that contest there. But the North players peeled off. They weren't in the marking contest, and they had the, the outnumber in the forward 50. So a lay down was their goal in the end, but that was on the back of Cole Jasney backing himself. He had to go, but he spoiled the ball into the corridor and well read from North Melbourne. 
the Kangaroos midfielders peeled off and, and worked very hard forward of the ball. So great result for North. Coming out here, guys. Barry Hall. Then we're going to have a look at some score sources. And North Melbourne doing a fantastic job, uh, particularly from scoring from stoppages. Have a look at that. Seven goals, three to two goals, five. They're really cashing in on the clearances. Goldstein's the man with the number one ruckman in the comp. Brown's in there at the moment against Curry. Jacobs gets it rolling. Momentum back with the Kangaroos. Brown, Wells, Harbrow. Lemons bangs it away to the wing. Ferrito up. Use the knuckles again. McDonald. Gibson. Trapped by Sexton. That's a push. Now he's got him and he's got it. Got it out just in time. Splendid tackle again, Malcheski. Ball stays in the area. Ablett still stranded on the half forward line. Just coming up. He'll come into shot in a second. There he is. Just coming in from the left there. Just still playing. Right now he's playing as a high half forward. Hammond by Sexton. Marked by right. Big switch on. And Swallow can go here. He's got a paddock ahead. He's got Zeebel ahead. They've got the overlap. McMillan. Zeebel still lurking in the pocket. Drives it in his direction. He's up. Couldn't bring it down. Saad again. Parts the seas. Found the gap where there wasn't one. Miller. Rosa. Harbour out to Lynch. One on one. McMillan. Good fist. Good spoil from McMillan. I said the uh, there's Ben Jacobs just getting some treatment on the interchange bench. He's at got the an moment. arm problem. Yeah, so uh, that's a concern for the Kangaroos. I said they had an overlap, the Kangaroos, on this near side, but it was because of the work rate of Tom Lynch closed in yep. to even the numbers out. Ablett hasn't seen it for a while. Grant's got a couple to beat. Used his body, ball to the back. Thompson, right spot, right time. McDonald, Ferrito. Harvey. Settled right down now. The top team in the comp. Harvey Short. Gibson. They found a gear and skipped away again. Gibson drives it to the pocket. Saad floats in. Gathered his own crumb though. And when he looked at Higgins said, you're chasing me or not? Collar Jasny. Back inside. Malcheski. Got a running wave off half back here. They Sons, they've got, got no them. target forward though. Rosa Miller turnover, Del Santo, and now North Melbourne on the rebound. Just lost their structure in front of the ball. They just needed the bailout kick so they could kick the ball long. They've only got Peter Wright sort of forward of the ball on that occasion. With Lynch on the bench, just didn't get to, as you say, he didn't fill up the viewfinder and say, yep. here's your dump out option. Higgins again. Wright's going to want this short. Didn't see the first option. Still space in front of Wade. Yeah. Very clever by Higgins. His opponent said, you called it, Blaine. He just took off on the other side. And as soon as the ball got turned around, he ran to this flank. And Saad was still blowing hard for his effort on the other half back flank. Clever. Higgins has three. We've all been at critical times. Here we are late in this third. And he hit that terrible. Off the, off the mark. Touched. Let's have a look at Ben Jacobs and what happened to him. Keep an eye there. Watch for he, where his arms get stuck. Now he's inside. My arm. So. Gee, dangerous. Aggressive. Martin. Caught. Good rolling tackle by Harvey. Lonigan, McKenzie, Archie. That's a great kick. Peter Wright. That is a great kick. Under extreme pressure. And well done by Wright too. That's understanding the play. It's very easy to sit out down the line and say, bomb it on the head, I'm one out, and I'm much bigger. He came at him and he gave him an option. Two and a half minutes left. That was well read by Archie as well. Yeah, and he not, kicked it to him. And not good communication between Tarrant and Swallow. 22 points the margin right now, the same as it was at half time. No Tom Lynch ahead though. But he's got Curry up oh, and Curry's second paid. grab. The big man, been looking forward to uh, slotting this one through. Four games with North Melbourne. 
his fifth game of yeah. AFL football, his first for the Gold Coast Suns. He's toiled away pretty well. I mean, Goldstein's on top, but in the hitouts, he's, he's worked hard. And this is just to drag one goal back. He's kicked three goals in his career. It's not bad ratio. That's all right from four games. So. Played some nab challenge for the Sydney Swans, of course, as well. Was on their list for a while. Had to go back to the SANFL. That's going to be done again. Some hard yards. And he misses. Brings it back to 20 points. It was 22 at half time. Experience has really taken over in this second half of the third quarter. North Melbourne are playing with 15 100 gamers or better. Oh, and there's one of them. Big fly. There's strong hands. One minute left. Crutch. Curry took the ball and Higgins. Good attack from both Martin and Swallow. Higgins bounced up like a rubber ball. Got it to Wells. And they're a late scoring chance here. Thomas. Oh, the shimmy was delightful. Wait. Couldn't half volley it. McKenzie. Paul. Harbrow and McKenzie. So 45 seconds left. Sexton's out on the wing. North have to work hard. They got the extra on the far side than Suns. Does he get back? Yeah, just shut down a little bit. Yeah. He had to go to the automatic play on. He would have had Jared Grant easily accept the footy forward. Good kick though there. Now Chesky. Still time. No key forward ahead. 25 seconds left. Only Jack Martin, so he can't unload the footy. Martin wants it long so he can jump. He goes wide to Ablett. Couldn't gather. 15 seconds. Ablett keeps it alive. Saad, look out. Back inside. Hall. Back outside. Harbrow. Eight seconds left. Need a mark from this kick to the pocket. McMillan fists it down. Wells. Cunnington. Danger averted for North Melbourne. Three-quarter time, hot night on the Gold Coast, 30-degree day, limited pre-game warm-up for both teams, and it's a 21-point margin at the last change. North Melbourne, the only undefeated team left. Three-quarter time on the Gold Coast, Metricon Stadium. North Melbourne opened up a 24-point lead early. Gold Coast Suns have got within three points a couple of times, but again, North Melbourne stretching the margin at three-quarter time to 21 points at the last change. Ablett's had some injury issues, and now it could be a problem with Adam Sard. Now Adam Sard looks like he's uh, been struggling with a groin injury treated by the physio at three-quarter time, uh, limp from the ground in the third quarter. Just see here, chatting to the medical staff and was in a fair amount of discomfort before the coach called them in for the huddle. I've got a feeling he had an operation around that area in the off-season, Lynchy. I'll double-check for you, but that's not great news. Not when you're the, you rely on your versatility, your lateral movement like uh, Adam Sard is. Um, uh, Jacobs, Ben Jacobs, we looked at, had that arm injury during the third term. He also went into the rooms, was treated by the medical staff. He is back out. He ran back out onto the ground. Here's Jacobs goes down and just gets a whack on that arm as he falls under Michael Riscatelli, I think it was, and went, was treated, and certainly it was back out there now. Barry Hall is with the coach of North Melbourne, Brad Scott. Yeah, Scotty, well, 21 points. Suns keep coming. It's game on. What's the message? Yeah, it is. We've just looked at the defensive system has been okay throughout the game, and that was really the main message to the group then, just to keep working on the things that you know we, we talked about before the game, because most of the game's been okay, but we had a few lapses that quarter. Had Benny Jacobs looked to hurt his shoulder in that quarter. Uh, what's uh, what's the update with him? Yeah, he'll start on the bench, but he's okay. Yeah, they've just restrapped him, so he'll be okay. Big last word coming up. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Thank you, Barry. Just had a look at the... The written documentation. Adam Saad played 16 games last year. It was a wonderful inclusion. He's walk, walking off the ground now. 16 games and finished the season early with groin surgery. My memory served me correctly there. Yeah, so Well done. That's not good that's news then. That's not great. Let's hope. Oh, gee, you almost say, I wish it was the other one, but do you really? <laughs> you know, this is, he's, he's still clutching. Our fingers crossed for the lad because he's doing super well. 21-point margin, first versus fifth on the ladder coming into this round. Final term underway. 
Early momentum could be massive, and the flick pass from Cunnington just missed his target. Hall, Curry, Hall. Oh, he wants him, Cunnington. That was a great chase. Flicks it back again. The handball back by Cameron. McKenzie. And Harbrow was there for him. She worked hard then, Cunnington. The ball's still in the Sun's hands. Oh, no, oh, got to get that up. Martin, he picked that up well on the run, though, Cameron. The long launch forward. Lynch couldn't get there and dropping back, taking the mark, Tarrant. Although it was a really good pick up off the ground, he had the, then didn't have the composure to execute the nice kick yep. inside forward 50. That handball has to hit the target. Yep. Yep. Brown. Interesting. And Mackenzie Brown. Good second grab. I'm actually surprised we haven't seen more of that. Uh, that matchup isolated and deep. White. Little fumble. Good attack though from both players. Day, White, McKenzie, Ablett. He's got the runner. Little flick from Lemons. Ablett. Can he find a chest? No. Oh. Finds Thompson. He was trying to put it out in front of Peter Wright. That was fantastic, but his, his viewfinder didn't take Thompson into account. Right. Tarrant. Gold well, Coast Suns won their first three games this year. Had a horror show last week against the Brisbane Lions. First loss of the year. Which would hurt them. Able so to go down in this home game. But North Melbourne well. have been unstoppable so far. 2016. Goldstein, one of the reasons why. Flies there. Curry. Couldn't pick it up. Gibson. Grant. Over it. Goldstein. Swallow. Martin. Not the prettiest passage of play, but it's still alive. Lemons. The bouncing ball. McDonald. Lonigan. McDonald did well. Kept his feet. Atley. Ferrito. Now we go. McDonald. Goldstein. And Atley. Again, found the gap where there wasn't one. Kick a little bit of a mongrel, but Brown makes it look superb. Boomer gave the shake and bake, looked at Harbrow and sent it through for a behind. His fellow veteran Drew Petrie's got the arms spread, saying, What about me? And there's Adam Sarden, that groin injury that you're talking about, Derm. Yeah, that's a shame, isn't it? That's a real shame. Doesn't look like he's been ruled out of the game just at the moment. Mm. But um, that assessment's just continuing at the moment. Harvey mops that up. He's got Drew Petrie down the line, only against midgets. He's got to go. It's against oh. Lemons. Had to pull the trigger earlier. Yeah, that's not... Oh. Now it's worse. Long way down there for Goldstein. Cameron. What an ID this situation. Harvey mops up that little mess. Now he knows. Bangs a wobbler. There's Petrie in that one-on-one. -on -one. He was grabbed. Petrie to line up from 20 out. And that's exactly what happens. Your isolated mismatch like that, yeah. the defender will panic. He thinks, I'm in all sorts of strive here. I'm giving it away size and weight. And he'll err on the side of giving a free kick away. And that's what, exactly what Lemons did for Drew Petrie. Well, Lemons comes in at 184. Drew Petrie at 197. Yeah. So fair. Well, you just imagine, remember back to when you were in grade six and you took hangers <laughs> over the grade preps? That's what it's like. <laughs> Except some of the great preps aren't good at hanging on all that well. <laughs> some cool heads in this North Melbourne outfit. Petrie's one of them. Was never going to waste that. Well, they found the way, and he wasn't happy there on a few occasions, and here's the mismatch, and uh, Lemons just, away just him. tried to block him. He's trying to protect that drop zone, let the ball hit the ground, or at least hold Petrie up to wait for assistance. From a third up jumper so the big men the big power forwards uh, are certainly putting the defense under pressure again we see his day so far impact on the scoreboard twice in the first term and now again early in the fourth biggest margin of the game for either team 28 points well he could finish with four drew petrie if they really put the Suns to the sword here. It's going to come in a fair bit more, and he's going to get some opportunity. Hall spears that in the wow. left direction from Spot Miller. 
That was a bullet. That was a bullet. And why that was even better than just your straight drop punt, that was the outside of, outside the, of the right, foot, right yeah. slipper. Yeah, just a beautiful kick. So this, for the instant reply, right to it. kick the door back Get open. Have a look at this on the outside of the right boot. Just turns himself inside out in that last stride, and that's a beautifully executed pass. To silence. Took Miller. Good strike. Bad luck. Murmurs in the crowd. They know this one's slipping away fast. Adam Sard back on the ground, boys. Good news there. He's become all of a sudden you know, such an important player for the Gold Coast Suns after coming off the rookie list. Petrie from four deep. Got hands on. Gibson had a piece of it. Lynch flicks it out the back. Harbrow had to wait. Wells. Higgins. Dumps it in Lindsay Thomas's direction. Sard's back on, right with him. Lindsay about to pounce. Day got there first. Loops the handball back. Boomer put enough pressure on that for the turnover to wait. And that stings. You did right getting Sard back on the ground is important. They worked so hard, North Melbourne, to win this ball back. But watch Adam Sard when he's got to turn around and chase Jared Wade here. Look at him. He gets to wait now. Waits one metre. Look at his chase. So just that power. He can't do it. The power, power is gone. He's, he, he, he's cooked. He can't. Well, look at him there on the back of screen. Now, if you... Wait's not slow. He's quick. But if you put them in a foot race, Sard wins. Come here, guys. And when you talk about losing your speed, it's the speed over the first five. I mean, yeah. You could probably still wind yeah. up into full pace, but it's that first five metres. If Be you a lose gentle your power, wind up. Very gentle wind up. Kick the last five goals of the game, North Melbourne. Oh, crashed. Jacobs to Wells, down Sando. Floats a little. Ball not clear. North Melbourne about to pounce here. And put the goal coast oh, to the given sword, up. you sense. He's given up, Sard. He's, he's actually given up. Yeah. Harvey to oh, Wells to wait, and they are going to put them to the sword if they get their way. You've got to get him off now. That's... I feel like Slug Jordan. You've got to get the boy off. He could do some real damage now. Well, I think he might have. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah, he could really rip that completely, and we're looking at... Gee, we're round five, and that could be season-ending. Just, just come from the ground, mate. Just walk from the ground. It's unravelling this season for the Gold Coast. They won their first three. This shaping is two losses in a row now. Slipping down the ladder. And a couple of their guns injured. Wait in the meantime. 45 degrees out. And 45 metres out. Never in doubt. <laughs> Jared Waits is just starting to make a, an impact. That's probably the story at the moment. Adam yeah. Sard, as we said, just super watch impressive. Him here. He's right in the heart of the pack there. And look at him. He's going to try and get to the outside. Back's here. Now watch him stop now. Yeah. It was that first couple of steps to yeah. take off. To turn around. Yeah. Oh, I feel for the kid because, you know, you can get a calf, you can get a hamstring. They come back three, four weeks, but that's a long-termer. The last 10 scores, and Jared Waite has kicked the last two goals, and that is uh, dominated by blue and white stripes. The first three goals in the third term was kicked by the Gold Coast Suns. The last six since that time have been kicked by North Melbourne. Did this to Fremantle last week. Blew them away late. Lindsay Thomas. I told to play on. Petrie. What was that? Waite, bouncing ball, through some legs. Keeps it alive. Still a chance to lay a tackle. Lindsay came hard. Flick back was okay. McKenzie got it from Lonigan. Gave it to Harbrow. Not a lot to go to. He's got Malcheski out wide. Jack Martin running hard. He started in the spine of the ground there. He looks pretty tired as well. And he's oh, Terry cut him down. Just. He was. Oh. Did he have a lot of power opportunity? I know it was a great tackle. Just yeah, enough yeah. time to panic and put up a fending left arm. That was the turtle That's what, again. Now. Oh. Oh, <laughs> just, just wrapped himself up. <laughs> oh, this is going to hurt. And Taren, oh, the bigger man loves those ones. Lindsay Thomas are free and they can smell blood here. North Melbourne. And that's the pressure. The pressure again, getting the ball in, repeated forward 50 entries. It's put an enormous pressure under the goal, on the Gold Coast Suns. 
And uh, now another one of their dangerous forwards gets a free kick. That's just a shove in the back. I remember talking to some international rugby players. You know, they say, what's the fun bit of your sport? And they said, being the big men, when we can get our hands on a winger. <laughs> and that tackle on Jack Martin by Tarrant is in the same area. Getting your hands and lining up a little bloke and just really taking it home to him. It hurts. Thomas from 40. You're watching the ladder leader put a big space between them and the Gold Coast right now. Well, that's, uh, they've kicked the last seven goals now, and uh, here it is. Multi-faceted forward line. They've got the three bigs. We know that uh, Brent Harvey's kicked multiple goals this year, and Lindsay Thomas is capable of kicking multiples. Sean Higgins is dangerous across half forward and up through the middle of the ground as well. They're a very dangerous forward, uh, very dangerous team with that forward line, and just see how they're ranked. They're the best offense in the game, averaging 123 points before this week. Well, 123 is their average. They've got 12 and a half minutes to get 10 points, so they're going to increase that average. I, I reckon they've got another four goals left in them, Dwayne. As we mentioned, they ran away from the Dockers last week. They are threatening to blow this one out big time. Lonning and Court. They look fresh still. Cunnington feeds it back. Higgins waited. Dragged down. I mean, keeping context, I mean, Hawthorne haven't been playing great footy, but they're the best, the best in the business. They had their first 100-point game last, last night. night. North Melbourne have got over 100 points in every game. Yeah. Goldstein, who started it all, helped North Melbourne get out to that four-goal yep. lead. Rosa, blasts it in the air. Tarrant, Abler, good attack, kept it in front, dragged down. Been a tough day. Oh, oh, on the line play too. Well, see, you can see Tom Lynch and Tarrant now just walking through the bottom of screen. Tarrant's the extra now, and he camped in front of Lynch. And Lynch took him down. Tarrant didn't like it because Lynch is going to take everyone down if they're double teaming him. Yeah. This is his natural opponent. Throw a Thompson. blanket over 20 on him. Look at that. And he's getting a bit frustrated, Tom Lynch, as, as well, because he had a big game last week. His team went down, very disappointing loss. And at the moment, his team are in all sorts of trouble, down by 45 points. So he's getting a bit frustrated being double teamed. Well, so Rosie, after three wins to start the year for the Gold Coast, and next week they head to Geelong to play the Cats at Simmons Stadium. Petrie got his arms free, took a while, slung. Cunnington, White, arms free, keeps it running. Dal Sando, Boomer, Lindsay Thomas screaming for it long. Goes inside into the congestion. Riscatelli. Harbrow, Riscatelli, caught Dal Sando. Got to be ball. Great tackle. The veteran, super tackle. Michael Riscatelli took on the tackle. I thought he'd break through. Oh, they've got players out left, right, and centre. Petrie goes down, though. There's a blood rule behind play, and there's Tarrant from that little fracas with Tom Lynch. And uh, they're running this game out beautifully. The Kangaroos, they deserve to be sitting at the top of the, the AFL ladder. Last time they met here, Gold Coast smashed them by 55. Yeah. In fact, the Gold Coast has smashed North Melbourne the last two times by 43 and 55. Uh, they are a different team in 2016. As good as they finished last year, they look better this year. As we said pre-game, they've won the last three games in between the two clubs, and Ablett has had seven of the nine Brownlow votes. They're primed, aren't they? They're, they're right at the right bracket now. We'll yep. talk about that in a second. So Thomas floats in. Rosa with the crumb. Riscatelli. Not a lot of options. That not a good one. Ferrito. Atley. Zeebel. Every Gold Coast player ahead of him. Goldstein wants this. Now he has got lemons in the matchup. He's got to go to him. He sits it up. White floats in, took him down and gave away a free kick. Knew he wasn't really going to be a marking option. We'll talk about just to mention they're in the challenging bracket now. The team they fielded tonight, North Melbourne, have 15 players who played 100 games or more. So they're super experienced. They've only got one player, 
Well, that's Kane Turner, who's played less than 30 games. And, and they even left out Lockie Hansen, as they have on a couple of occasions. He would make them 16. 16 players. And we have a look at that now. And we get a look at a, a view at that. Haven't we got one less than 25? 25 to 49, and then it just... Petrie floats, sorry, Derm. Go for it. Higgins, Ablett, Higgins. Yours again. Yeah, and, and so they are right in the window. Now, a lot of the times when you get that much experience, you might get a few players who were clinging on to their youth and just hanging in there, and they're, they're literally past their use by date. There's still value of some sort. North Melbourne don't have any of those blokes. All of their really old blokes are still really, really good. So they are in absolute right bracket to challenge. Lemon stumps are clear. North Melbourne with an extra man behind the ball, but Lynch beats out and he had the reach. Thompson just played too far off him then. He should have been third man up. Rosa. He took off there. He's gone. And he's got to be gone. You still have to handball it once you've been told to play on. Malcheski, a roller towards the boundary. And McMillan sees it roll out. In fact, the Lipper. There you go. Uh, rugby union before there's, I can see the Gary Allen, the chip and charge coming in with this new boundary line interpretation being a lot stricter Goldstein Put on back onto it and look at Boomer Harvey coming to the bench now, so that's your super old guy, and in most clubs a bloke that age is on the way out, his pace is awesome, his craft is at an all-time peak. He's, he's the second most capped oh, player in the history of the game. Yet he's an absolute, currently he's still an absolute star. And the other one's Petrie, who's still a linchpin. Yeah. But it is now or never. They've got a window open with this ageing list. And boy, have they kept it open this year. It's more open than it's been for a long, long time at North Melbourne. Higgins to Thomas. Used his body. Clever, he's got three to beat here, Lindsay. Make it four now. Oh, no, help. <laughs> Petrie. Two on four. Petrie hands clear. Thomas from the pocket. Centering kick, unselfish. There's Wait, one, one keeps on the ball there. This is bizarre. <laughs> There's no one for the Suns to kick it to because they're all inside defensive 50. That's a good spot up, though. He sees Archie just run into space. Archie Not, holds it up. Real talent, Archie, but only seven possessions for the night. He's got a little bit of company in that area of inexperienced players who don't know how to get the footy more than four times a quarter. So that's it. that's part of the learning curve, though, Lynch. Yeah, at the moment, he's a, probably a forward 50 op operator only. Yeah, opportunistic. Yeah. Yeah. Danger again here for the Suns. North with four players around it. Yeah, hoping it came out. If it squeezes out, they're away. Well the Gold Coast have Geelong next week. North Melbourne have the Western Bulldogs. That should be a cracker as well. Grant. Oh, he got a little nudge, so he got away with that. A spare's back for the Kangaroos here. It's McMillan. He might just pounce on this. There he is. Ablett off hands. Play on to advantage, and he gets himself... A little consolation prize. So North Melbourne, they've got the Western Bulldogs next week. Young McDonald there, he had the onerous task of taking Tom Lynch, the third man up. Now the Premiership predictor, this is where they have plotted themselves in recent time. Now, obviously, if you haven't seen this before, if you can score more than 100 points, you're in the top left-hand corner. So this is how we predict... So what's that, that saying? 15 out of the last 16 teams have finished in that top left-hand corner. Yeah, and yep. so their offence is right. They've yep. just got to tweak their, their defence, stop some scores against, and you're they're going to see them right in the window. The, the average you, you restrict the opposition to scoring against you is 86 or less, and what you score is 100 or more. Martin, clever there. Used his full measure, hits wide, he's Archie. Ablett, you know he wants it, got ignored. Lynch, full forward, three to beat for Rito. Oh, just a little quick from uh, Tom. He's just getting frustrated. Just <laughs> grazed the top of the scone. He's, he's 
pushing the envelope. Well, he, they call he, it. he actually really needs to be careful here. He can't uh, be getting reported. Here's Turner, the late inclusion. Well, Mason, Mason Wood, the late exclusion, right to wait. We've got Petrie pushing down. Sam Day is there against him. So he's got the one big backman. The Brown on Curry. So Brown about the lead with Curry. Curry got a hand on it, knocked it to a dangerous zone. Day, Malcheski oh. missed his hand or target. Martin mops it up. Ablett got it from Riscatelli, gave it to Hall. Hasn't got a lot to go too long. Had to go wide. Lynch. That's near 50. That's 50. Yeah. Yes. So he will be within range. Well, that was that was too obvious for an experienced player. He went over the line. If you're not in the marking contest, you can't touch the player that takes the mark. And that's exactly what happened and stepped over the line as well. I reckon the umpires have just relaxed the policing of the 50 metres in the opening two games of this round. They were very yeah, stringent yeah. in the first four rounds. But that one was spot on. Yeah, yeah yep. that's that's the way it's been done in the first four rounds. For a four-goal night, and for 22 Skinned it for the season so there. far. So what Tom Lynch has got to do now, he knows he's going to get beaten. Terrence come to him. Try to just do the mini rough up. Spud comes to him. He's actually got to make sure he doesn't get reported, and he's got to make sure that these defenders, he gets a bit of fear in their mind that he knows he can beat them next time. He's got to walk off the ground tonight, leaving something, some dent in their minds about how they're going to take him on next time. Yeah. And there we see the race for the Coleman medal. Tom Lynch out to 22 goals with his four tonight. Buddy played earlier today. So Jared White's got a chance to go to outright second behind Tommy Lynch. From the restart, still a few minutes left in this one. Brown bangs it long, no one home. Day. Thanks, Jerry. Hold there. Saving Hold Mark. Hold you. Hall. Some space to use. Swallow overcommitted, left Martin free. Farida got a knuckle on it. Harvey, here we go. Higgins. Stay out. I think they're just about out of run. Fair enough too. As you said earlier in the call, it's been a warm day here in uh, on the Gold Coast. And certainly a, a no, nice conditions. Jacob's back on after that shoulder problem. Just off the bench. Ben Cunnington about to come back on. Just out of shot there on the on the chalk of the sidelines. They take on the Western Bulldogs next week. They need all their best ball winners in there. The doggies have got very good again at winning the footy. Will Cunnington be out there? Oh, good smother by Wells. Brown caught high by the hair. So five wins in a row to start the season for North Melbourne. First time they've done that since 2005. Harvey. They were challenged a number of times uh, tonight and uh, they've responded on each occasion. As we said, the first three goals that third term were kicked by the Gold Coast Suns and great response, kicking the next... Petrie! <laughs> <laughs> and that's your 30-something, you can still jump that high. Having some fun at the yeah. moment. Wade didn't sit for him. And you mentioned their experience, Petrie. has been one of their all-time greats. Game 298 for Drew Petrie. Tonight, 300th in a fortnight against the Saints. 33 years of age. Lonergan. Oh, oh, he, he dropped did his that. head. Yeah, dropped his head. Good call. Touch, play on you. Touch, touch, touch. McMillan dumps it back. Ablett. Gee, that was good reaction just to trap that by Ablett. Turner, Zebel, Harvey, Petrie. Good spot oh, up. Brown on his own. Good spot up. Beautiful use. Well, he started it all, Ben Brown. Two goals in the opening term, got them up and running. And just going back to the possible for high contact free kick, I said good call. 
I reckon if you're about to get a whack in the head, you're allowed to pull your head in there, aren't you? <laughs> so maybe yes. it was to a free kick. <laughs> Well, he got lined up from behind. He did. He yeah. pulled her in real quick. It's just sometimes, oh, it's, don't duck your head. Sometimes it's natural reaction to pull your head out of the way. And smart. 11 goals, three this season. So he's an accurate kick as well. And he rams that home to emphasise the point. He's developed into a really good player, Ben Brown. Just especially with Drew Petrie still being in the team. It's the high-scoring ruse. This is their yearly plot, Lynchy. And they're currently on 18-11. So the kick goals better than they have in rounds one and two. And they are four points off their yearly average now. And that's the first time since 2000 that they've scored over 105 points on five straight occasions, which is exceptional. And that's why they're just getting themselves into legitimate premiership contenders. As you mentioned, they don't want to concede too many scores. One of those was a five-point win over Melbourne, where they had to score a monster score to get over Melbourne's monster score. But they are setting a good pace at the moment. The Kangaroos, Rosa. Martin, Cameron, Hall, Lemons. Day back inside, yeah. Colin Jasney. Ablett might jump for this in the middle of the pack. Hall on his left. He came from the back flank about three seconds ago. Boomer, Wells. And he looks young all of a sudden this season, Daniel Wells. Oh, here he goes, Boomer. Boomer's off. He's got Lindsay Thomas long. Lindsay wants it long. It's in Lindsay's direction. He might sit on shoulder. Oh, oh, oh. oh it was fun. It <laughs> Lindsay, was fun. he wanted the mark of the year. He wanted a car then. It was an alley -oop. He sat that up for Lindsay to take mark of the year. <laughs> Just had to touch it. He didn't yeah. get near it. He might, he might blame Kate Cole Jasney. If to, he for, crumbled. He went to ground. <laughs> oh, it was exciting. One minute left. Wells. Hall tries to break his way clear and he spears that to Riscatelli. Lynch got his arms free. Hall. He's had six possessions in the last 90 seconds. And that sits. And big Peter Wright's been pretty good. Yeah, and that's uh, one of the more encouraging signs for Gold Coast Suns. Hasn't had a massive night as far as disposals. I mean, this is coming up for disposal 17. He's flushed a couple of long bomb goals and he'll line up now for his fourth and the way his first three have gone you'd suggest this will go into the top deck the thing i love about through. his game tonight is he's taken eight marks and of his 14 possessions he's actually had 10 contested yeah so he's winning his own footy forward of the forward of the uh of play he'll be keeping his spot you'd think he slips that to the right but at the same time He's done enough in his first game for the year to suggest he should stay in the side. We sorted his kicking accuracy out there. But um, you're right, he's, he's Ruckman size, but key position, agility, the way he moves. He's a, an exciting prospect. Uh, first round draft pick from two years ago. McMillan takes off. He might run out of time here. He will. He looks up. He sees Siebel. Siren beats them all. But again, an emphatic victory. Very good. To the pace setters of the competition, North Melbourne. Still the team to beat early in 2016. Undefeated, five from five, for the first time for the club since 2005. Some of the stories of the night, Lindsay getting amongst it again. Played pretty well, in and out of the game. We'll have a look at North Melbourne. They consolidate their position on the top of the ladder there. 123.9 is their percentage, 20 points. Five straight wins, the only team with five straight wins. Now, the Gold Coast holds sixth, depending on what happens later on in this round, is whether it'll stay that way. We saw some of the stories there. Ben Cunnington was on screen. He will be examined for a late drop of the knees into the back of, of the great Gary Ablett. And yes. Saad as well with the, the reoccurrence of a, an awful groin injury, we suspect. 
And Barry Hall has one of the grandfathers of this team and he shows no signs, Baz, of slowing up. Uh, no signs at all of slowing up, Drew Petrie. Fantastic ever tonight. Five and zip, uh, you must have spoke about this pre-season because uh, you come out this year and uh, certainly put a few wins on the board. Yeah, we have, Baz. I think we're obviously a more mature group now. Uh, lots get spoken about. Maybe we're a bit old, but I think you look at the performance of all the 30-plus year olds this year and it's been outstanding. So uh, it, it's a great start. It's a really great start. But, geez, you drop a couple and you're sort of back in the pack. So uh, we're not getting carried away. One thing we've noticed is a really high scoring, 119 points again tonight. Uh, the offensive side of your game's going really well. Yeah, it has been. The defensive part was better tonight. You know, they get 81 points, so I think last week Freo still kicked 100, and in other weeks, you know, Melbourne kicked 120 odd. So uh, better tonight um, against a side that you know really good with their run and carry. So to restrict them to 81 points has been really good. And the forward mix is going really great. You're almost a father figure up up forward there. You are. Uh, you're playing sacrificial roles at times, it, but it's a really good mix. You've got Big Benny Brown playing some good footy. Jared Waits yeah. been outstanding for you. Yeah, you're right, Baz. The, the mix has been pretty good so far, and uh, tonight there was a fairly even spread of goal kickers. Um, Higo, Harvey, um, Lindsay, Wellesley was fantastic tonight. Just his com competitiveness, his chasing and tackling. And as long as we all bring a bit of defensive, uh, a few defensive acts each week, uh, we all get a game. Now, late in that last quarter, you played 289 games and you're trying to take Mark of the Year. Uh, I didn't think it had you in it. I know. I reckon Sammy Day could have just <laughs> let me take it, but he got a fist in. Yeah, I got off the ground, Baz, uh, for, the, for the first time this year. It was... Uh, it was nice to be up there again, but uh, didn't uh, didn't follow through and hold it. Dogs Friday night, challenges keep coming. Yeah, they do. Uh, it's, it's good though. Like, I mean, you, you want to be playing these sides. So I think the competition's shown how, how even it is now. And, uh, you know, every week you've got to be on. So uh, we'll certainly have to be on uh, next Friday night at Eddie Had. Great start of the year. Go and enjoy it. Thanks, Baz. Great stuff there, Barry Hall with Drew Petrie. And Drew kicking two goals tonight. Fantastic effort by the North Melbourne side for the five wins in a row now for the first time since 2005 and a 38-point victory tonight against the Gold Coast. A great effort, led by 18 points at quarter time, 22 points at half time, 21 at three-quarter time. And despite being pressed there for a while by the Gold Coast, who kept coming and coming and coming, but in the end still couldn't quite get there. And every time North Melbourne had the answer and won 18, 11, 119 to 11, 15, 81. Top of the ladder, Kangaroos. Benny Brown was a pretty good effort tonight, kicking four goals. Higgins three, Petrie Goldstein and Waite kicked two each. Goldstein getting amongst it, playing great football again. Del Santo with 28 disposals. And Tommy Lynch kicked four goals right back in for the Gold Coast. It was fantastic. So a lot of upside for the Gold Coast Suns. Four and three goals respectively there. Hall 32 and as you can see Rosa and Gary Ablett who was restricted with injury through the course of the game just kept not quite getting into the game today. Gary Ablett as far as uh, getting a good run with the roll of the uh, green or the rub of the green finished up with 28 uh, disposals for the night. All right, the other game coming up tonight and check this out on Channel 503. The Bulldogs and Brisbane coming to you from Eddie Had Stadium and the Doggies Third on the ladder, three and one going into this match tonight. As I said, live from Eddie Head Stadium, 5.03 to catch this in about uh, 10 minutes' time, the game about to start. And uh, let's have a look at the Western Bulldogs lineup. Uh, they've got uh, Easton Wood coming back into the side, which is great news. The All Australian defender, who will be the captain tonight of the Bulldogs, with uh, Bob Murphy out, of course, with his uh, knee injury for the rest of the season. So Easton Wood steps up for his moment in the sun as the captain of the Western Bulldogs. Campbell, Dixon, and Dale into the side. Yeah, Hannison, of course, with that terrible hamstring injury. Boyd with a shoulder, Hamling and McLean out of the selected side, or sorry, out of the side, selected on Thursday night. In the meantime, let's go to Eddie Had, where our very own Jonathan Brown caught up with his old teammate from Brisbane, Daniel Merritt. Daniel Merritt, great to see you, mate. How are you? Good to see you, mate. Now, you you're the captain of the defence now. You're the only bloke over about 21. No no. How are you going with that now? Mate, it, uh, it's a bit of a struggle at times, because... Uh, a few of the young boys are space cadets, but um, <laughs> I'm just trying to keep them in line, mate. We've got some really good young lads down there with Harris Andrews. The good um, mate Timmy nodding there, the old footy trip partner. <laughs> <laughs> One of the best. Um, yeah, and then we've got guys like Diz Gardner has been doing a great role this year. And then a few of the older guys, like Clay Beams and um, Harwood, uh, they've been really chipping in on that leadership point of view and uh, helping us out. Fantastic. Now, one of those young blokes is your flat, not flat, mate, because you're the master, <laughs> you and your wife, Sarah, Josh Shackey. You did play on him during the pre-season, the match simulation. What's going to make this kid a star for the Brisbane Lions? Uh, 
what impressed me about uh, Shaki is that he never stops moving, mate. And that was one of your traits as well, um, where wherever the ball was, he just always kept moving. Because as a defender, what you want, you want the forward to stand still so I know where, where you are and where the ball is so then I can judge whether to come up um, and drop off you or to stay on you and uh, spoil the ball. So he's, he's constant movement and he's a big lad and he jumps at the ball. So, um, and to finish that, the cream on the cake is that he's a beautiful last set shot at goal. Well, he's a beautiful set shot. Something in the Brisbane Lions we haven't been doing the last uh, few oh, weeks. Mate. Uh, mate, you've got the sore squad here tonight. We saw that in the NAB Challenge. The sore squad is apparently turning up tonight. For all the people that haven't seen it before, you've got a cheer squad of about 50 people that yeah. start cheering you on when you get a fist <laughs> of the ball. We will see a few of those fists tonight. I know, mate. It's, uh, it's not often the defenders get all the applause, mate, so it's good for footy, I reckon, but um, very random. But, yeah, the boys uh, are getting along tonight, so hopefully they, uh, they lift the whole group and we uh, get a win tonight. Well, fantastic. All the best tonight, Rog. Thanks, Mikhail. Fantastic. You're doing a great job. Thanks, mate. Two greats of the Brisbane Lions there. Big Daniel Merritt alongside the great man Jonathan Brown. Here is the Brisbane team. Rockliffe coming in, the captain. And Mays goes out of the team. They played pretty well last week, the Lions, so don't expect a walkover. Of course, those injuries starting to hit at uh, the Western Bulldogs. That'll be a great game, as I said, on Channel 503. Looking ahead now to Anzac Day and the big game between my boys, the Magpies, and the Bombers. It's going to be a beauty, as it always is, Collingwood and Essendon. The teams have been selected after the last training sessions today and some big news coming out of Collingwood. Jack Frost comes into the side, but the other ends we can see there are quite incredible. A bloke by the name of Josh Smith. Now, that sounds exotic enough. A boy from Queensland, a mature age player, 22 years of age. He was picked at number 25 in the rookie list this year, coming onto the Collingwood list. He now was elevated during the week. Uh, he's a, a really good player. Play on the wing, uh, 29 possession average last year in the Neeful, so he can get the ball, but a mature age Queenslander. And you think, well, that's probably exotic enough until you hear about the mature age player from Oklahoma State. Yep, the big American, Mason Cox. All 211 centimetres of him will play his first game for Collingwood in the ruck and probably at full forward on the MCG on Anzac Day. His parents are flying out as we speak to land in Melbourne tomorrow morning to be ready to go to the MCG to see their son who started off as a soccer player and a basketballer, as I said, at Oklahoma State, running out onto the MCG for the Pies. I didn't think I'd ever say those ins and outs, I can tell you. Number 60 in the 2015 rookie list, playing his first game for Collingwood from Oklahoma State. For the Bombers... They've got another of their top-up players coming in as well in Sam Grimley, the former Hawk, coming in with Courtney Dempsey, Ambrose and Laverde out of the side. Now, the outs for Collingwood are probably even a bigger story. If you can get bigger than a big American and a new Queenslander coming in, Jesse White omitted Tom Langdon out with a knee. But the big story today is that Travis Cloak has been dropped from the Collingwood side and will play in the VFL side for the Magpies tomorrow against Essendon at Victoria Park. Here's what Big Trav had to say about the challenge ahead of him. Footy, mate, it's kind of part of the game, isn't it? Um, you, know, you get selected or you don't get selected. I guess it's my opportunity to go back uh, be part of the VFL squad and get a kick and uh, see what goes from there. Is it a fair call, do you think? Oh, it's not up to me, so uh, I'm not the powers to be to make the decision. Um, and that's kind of it. I guess it, being Anzac Day, it must be tougher to take than any other game, being the best game on the calendar. Oh, it probably is, yeah. I guess, um, what, 13 years ago, I actually played my first game. I'm on Anzac Day and... I guess spent 13 years since I played in VFL, so um, yeah, a bit of a, I guess, trivia question to be later on in life. That's the only way you can look at it, I guess. And you'll have a run around in the VFL tomorrow and try and find a bit of form? Yeah, I'll be there. So um, if you're a bit bored, come down to Big Park and have a, have a look, um, have a bit of a cheer, and yeah, 2 o'clock kickoff, so that'll be good. Good on you, Trav. Thanks. Good. Yeah, good on you, Trav. Great attitude there. He's a wonderful young man and uh, he'll be back in the Magpies Seniors in no time. Let's hope he gets a, a kick and a couple of goals tomorrow and gets his confidence back for the Pies. Good on you, Trav. Good luck tomorrow at Victoria Park. And for Collingwood and Essendon supporters, get down there. It'll be a great day at old Victoria Park tomorrow before the big game on uh, Monday at the MCG. All right, back to tonight's game. Gold Coast and North Melbourne. The Kangas by 38 points. They've been undefeated in season 2016. Here's the song.